Happy Sunday, everybody. It is good to see y'all. Those of you that made it anyway, uh, I hope you're doing well today. My microphone's doing that thing where it slowly loses power. And I don't, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Why is it so quiet today? I'll turn the music down a little bit. Um, let's figure out what's going on here. Advanced audio properties. Let's give it some gain. We'll give it 8 dB a gain. Test, test, test. It's not helping. <laughs> Do I have a noise gate on there maybe? Well, whatever. Good to see you, Clay. Thanks for joining me again. How, how's the audio of everything going? Oh, you know what? I know what's wrong. My system settings always revert the microphone for some reason. Yeah. I bet it's, yeah, now it's super overblown. So dumb. Yeah, so every time I reset my computer, the amount of gain on my microphone changes for some reason. It was set to like negative 80, 85% or something like that. I, I have it set perfectly. I have it set to Unity. And then, yeah, I have played Power World. We're going to talk about that in a little bit just in the stream. We don't, the stream doesn't actually start until we hit 100 concurrence. <laughs> How about that? We're at 71, 85. We're getting there. Good to see everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, let me turn on the super chat thing. I forgot about that. I think it's this one. Boom. So if anybody super chats, it does all. I think it still works. I think I might have broken it. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Mondo. Good to see you. I was messing with it and then it just stopped working. So whatever. I need your take on the music. So do we like the music or no? You know what? I'm just going to pause it. The, the reason I put on the music is because I like listening to it and I get to listen to it along with y'all. But the problem with it is sometimes I get copyright strikes <laughs> and then I have to go edit it and it's super annoying. It's really, really annoying. All right. You know what, Lotus starts off with a really good question. Hey, Destiny community, I just bought a Series X, but I'm not sure if I should unbox it yet and set it up. Having a hard time to see if 2024 will be Xbox year, any advice would be much appreciated. Why would you wait to set up your new console? Like, are you thinking about selling it? I don't know. I don't really understand. If, if it's your first Xbox and you haven't had one before, why would you not set it up right now? It, do you have a PC? Because if you're not playing Pal World, you're missing out. We're going to talk about Pal World. <laughs> you feel like you're at a strip club? I like techno. I don't know. Uh, check this out. This is insane. One of the first big sort of Xbox exclusives. It's available on Steam and everywhere else. But it's on Xbox Game Pass. That's how I played it. And Pal World is really, really fun. Check this out. They just released this statement this morning and they're saying Pal World has the highest concurrent player count of any paid game in the history of Steam. And if we go over to Steam charts, you can actually see, I don't know if it's updated since I refreshed it last, but Pal World is currently the top played game with a million concurrents. And if you go down to records, free to play, free to play, free to play. I think Lost Ark's free. Anyway, Pal World's right here. I know Dota is. Power World's right here with 1.28 million concurrents. I'll zoom in a little bit so you, we don't get distracted by this gaming chair. <laughs> uh, yeah. What an incredible feat for some smaller game to come along. And I, I wanted to pose a question to y'all. Do you think that's happening? Because everyone's just so fed up with the trend chasing and... The retention metric. I know I'm really tired of games that stream me along forever. Personally. Pal World really needs patches, but it's really dang good. Yeah, it's very fun. I, I played a couple hours of it. I want to play it. A bit. Really, really enjoying Pal World quite a bit. Um, I think they've made a few other tweets. Let's just let's just check out what Pal World has been tweeting about. Uh 
Power World has sold 4 million copies in three days. How much is Power World? Buy Power World. Uh, $26.99. Or $29.99. So $26.99. Let's do some quick math. Uh, 26.99 times 4, 4 million. I'm really good at math, y'all. Here's, here's where they're sitting at. $107 million, 960,000. Like what an incredible achievement for the pal world team. I'm so happy for them. Anytime a game comes along, that's a smaller, smaller studio and has a massive success like this. How come nobody thought I'm going to move my mic a little bit. How come nobody thought about, um, doing something like this before or maybe nobody's ever done it where it's like really good and a lot of people are like oh it's so violent and you can do all this violent stuff i'm like it's not really that violent we make it violent with our imagination at least in the intro they're like oh you kill the pokemon or whatever it's like eh but it's not copyright it's so it's different enough i am nintendo's trending did they sue pal world <laughs> Well, it looks like they've used AI generate generative tools. So like what's the what's the controversy? Let's read the controversy about Pal World, everybody. Pal World embroiled in AI and Pokemon plagiarism controversy. Look, unless it's like a one-to-one -one copy of the Pokemon, the idea of another game where you capture monsters. I mean, I think Nintendo is going to have a tough, tough case. I feel like this is enough of a departure that the pal world uh, studio, it's pocket pair. Apparently I, I think they're all good. That's my personal take on it. Pal world embroiled in AI and Pokemon plagiarism controversy. Social media users highlight character design, similarities and developers generative ai history i've said this before a ai is coming whether you want it to or not we can all talk about like oh ai is so bad if you look at the potential though to use ai responsibly i'm i find it a little bit exciting if i'm being totally honest i am very concerned and i talked to paris about this on the channel this week i'm very concerned about uh, voice actors and actresses not getting paid appropriately for their work. But if a voice actor does like 5,000 lines of dialogue and they agree as part of their contract to allow their character that they voiced or characters that they voiced to generate conversations beyond what they were able to record, I, I find that interesting and a potentially responsible way to do it. But I don't know, how How do you feel about AI? I feel like it's just kind of like, we're not supposed to like AI. Like that's been the, the consensus, right? AI is bad. And the AI that's like straight up plagiarizing where we all saw the last of us meme basically, where what basically happened was somebody typed in like oh, old man and, and young kid go through, <laughs> go through the, the wasteland zombie apocalypse. And it's just, Joel and uh, uh, Ellie from Last of Us, basically. It is not pre-recorded, everybody. I'm doing these live. Let's continue on with this news story, though. Laws and regulations need to catch up for AI. That I do agree on. Steam's newest hit survival game, Power World, has been accused of plagiarizing designs from Pokemon as social media users negatively highlight its creator's historical association with generative AI tools. This is a situation where... I don't see the negativity. I'm not going out there looking for the five people that are pooping on Pal World, right? Like, I'm not going out of my way to find the drama about Pal World. So I haven't seen it. All I see is people talking about how much fun this game is, how great the game is, how they're liking it, celebrating how great the game is doing. And that's what I choose to focus on. If you choose to interact with negativity, you know what the algorithm is going to do? It's going to give you more negativity. That's all you're going to see. 
Be very mindful about that. Like that's what it does. Pal World by Japanese Studio Pocket Pair released in early access on PC and Xbox on Friday and immediately became a breakout success with his creator claiming 2 million in sales. It's up to 4 million now. The huge launch inevitably reignited discourse that has followed Pal World since its announcement around its character designs, apparent similarities to Pokemon. Let's test this theory. Test this theory, sorry. I'm going to type Pal World. Granted, the search. Ooh, well, it doesn't look right, but thanks, Jez. Jez just get to 10 memberships. Thanks, Jez. Whoa, that is that's really cool. Thank you. All right. Here's what pops up for me when I type in Pal World. Thank you, Jez. I think that's good old Jez Corden gaming so we're gonna get the little the little notifications <laughs> um if i turn it off does it go away or is it gonna keep going because it's gonna ding 10 times anyway here's what i find when i type in power world i've been putting in work on power world yesterday a game i never tweeted about before but it won me over 10,000 concurrence everyone power world is a really fun game you can capture pals and explore me building this massive base I'm a simple man. Pal World captures the majesty of my spouse riding around on top of a giant fat cat. Pal World is the highest concurrent current game. Pal World, uh, Pal World has sold about Gene Park. Pal World has sold about as fast, if not faster, than the video game about the most popular fictional character on Earth. So Spider-Man, yeah. Wow. So it's sold about as quick as spider-man that's in that's incredible yeah see it's the i turned it back on and it's thinking so i'm going to turn that off for a bit but thank you Chez. um what else we got here assuming this power developer write-up is accurately translated this was the most in over their heads team of all time first time creating models instead of purchasing no source control nor naming conventions didn't know what a rig was a rig if you don't know is what you put into a care it's like their skeleton basically and that's how you allow them to move and such they didn't even know what it was <laughs> well everyone else was playing power world i'm about to rate him wow good for you jez anyway uh i'm still looking for all the drama about power world i'm not seeing it power world uh power world's developer explained why the version is missing i did see this drama there were some issues with the xbox version not having crossplay or something another person celebrating 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 power world happy tweets where's the drama about ai how did they even find the drama about ai i'm not seeing it and i is this because of how the people i follow or something Anybody can sue anyone for any reason. Okay, this is Hogue. Uh, so I can't tell you what Nintendo will or won't do about Power World. I can tell you, however, that they'd have a tough time winning on any infringement claim that isn't arguing a direct design copy. Let's see if I can turn notifications back on here. We gotta keep up the good work, Destin. Are you looking forward to or going to be covering Banishers? Uh, my plan is a game that's embargoed for next week that I'm going to be very happy to talk about. Um, Suicide Squad. I'm not sure when Banishers comes out in the next few weeks, though. I'd have to look. People are mad about Colt's Pal World tweet. What, that he likes it? <laughs> I don't see any drama about Pal World. I don't see anything about AI. I just see everybody having fun with Power World. So let's let's go back to this article that says there's a bunch of drama. Cuz I didn't know about the drama cuz I'm not seeing it. So let's let's learn about what everybody's mad about today. Although the gameplay of Power World is closer to survival games like Ark and Rust than Game Freak series, many social media users have noted the obviously obvious influences its character designs have taken from the Nintendo series. Following Power World's release on Friday, some X users collated 
perceived similarities between Pal World's pals and Pokemon. It's not even subtle about its ripoffs. Not found. <laughs> Did they delete their tweet? They shut it down. So either I'm blocked by this person or they deleted the tweet. One second. Let's see what's going on here. I'm curious if they like lock their account. No, they locked their account. I checked one of my uh, old Twitter accounts to see if they, they post anything. Yeah, it's, it's like shut down. So that tweet has been removed. But what it said was, it's not even subtle about its ripoffs. How much else has it stolen? Wrote one user. Another added, I want to like Pal World, but I don't know if I can support running existing Pokemon through a fuser and passing them off as new IP. Since I'm bored, I'm going to be making a thread of this. Like, how many people... It got a lot of attention. Okay. Uh... Sobble's fin. Galaran's meowth face. The situation is further muddled in the eyes of some by Pocket Pair's historical relationship with generative AI tools. Artist Zaytri noted on X. What did he note? Or they note? She note. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, Zaytri noted on X that one of its previous titles was AI Art Imposter, a game which literally uses an AI image generator as its core mechanic. <sighs> all, all I care is that the game's fun. I, I think it's fun. So they're mad at that in the past, there was AI utilized for one of their previous games, and there's concern that there might be AI for the new game. One of the Pocket Pair CEO's ex post from 2022 discussed how he believed generative AI tools could one day be sophisticated enough to avoid copyright issues. In another potentially more damning post from 2021, Mizobi showed how AI could be used to generate new Pokemon designs. This does not, of course, prove that any of the designs in Pal World were made with the help of AI. However, some believe that if this was indeed the case, it could explain the similarities with the game's designs, especially since Pal World has was made by a mostly inexperienced team, many of whom were amateurs before being hired. One team member, Mizobi has claimed, was even previously working in a convenience store. How, how do you feel about this chat? Like, what's your read on it? I don't particularly care. <laughs> it, I, I know that's like cold to say. Like, I don't want anybody ripping off anybody else's art, but... It's a little, it's a little bit. I don't see anybody like up in arms about this. They used to work in a convenience store and now they're making games and that's bad. That's an awesome success story. In my opinion. Now the question is, how did they get there? Right. Are they using some AI generated? Just like make me a lamb Pokemon type. And then they just put that in their game. It's all. It's all going to fall under fair use. Nintendo's not going to be able to do anything about it. Yeah, uh, Marty K says, oh my God, he worked in a convenience store. Maybe he needed money. Why is that? Why is that the take? One, t like, how, how am I supposed to read this? Let's assume they're being factual. One team member, Mizobi, has claimed was even previously working in a convenience store. Oh my God. You know what, chat? I used to work at UPS loading trucks. Like, am I lesser because of that? You know what I did while I was working at UPS loading and non-loading trucks? I learned how to make video content. Maybe the convenience store worker was learning stuff and then ended up working at this company and building their skill set. That's good. People improving themselves is a good thing. I'm see the articles doing exactly what it wants to do. It's getting me all riled up about 
what this one artist is upset about. Ah, I'm falling for it. Here's a clip of gameplay that clearly shows the game utilizing an AI image generator. All right. This must be their old game. Yeah. Pocket Pair, the company behind Pal World, has a game completely built around AI generated images called AI Art Imposter. So yeah, I'm not giving them good. They have 4 million in sales. I think it's fine. AI Art Imposter is a game where you identify the AI art. You don't actually seem to understand that. Somebody responded, here's a clip of gameplay that clearly shows the game utilizing an AI image generator. It's one thing for a game to include AI assets. Do you know that AI Art Imposter has been trained on artwork from artists who hadn't? Do we know that it hasn't? Sorry, do we know that AI Art Imposter has been trained on artwork from artists who hasn't given permission? It wouldn't be able to generate nearly as well if it was trained on such a small database. So mostly it's this one person upset. It's it's one person upset that, I, that I'm seeing. Let's see here. Uh, so it's still, where are the other people upset? I don't know what this person's saying. So we've heard from Zaytri. We heard that a, a, somebody worked in a convenience store at one point. So this must be these must be the tweets from somebody working there. If you pass it through the filter of AI, the image is often okay. In a blog post, in a blog post published this week, the CEO even claim that Pal World's 100 character concepts were made mostly by a single graduate student. She was a new graduate and had applied to nearly 100 companies but failed to Molly wrote. And she is now drawing most of the characters in Pal World. Drawing. So doesn't that immediately... <laughs> if she's drawing them, they're not AI generated. Right? And she is now drawing most of, most of the characters in Pal World. Elsewhere in the post, Mazobi discusses how Pocket Pair's previous game, Craftopia, was built mostly using off-the-shelf assets and how when it started work on Pal World, the company had no animation staff. Hey, you know, have you ever heard of freelancers? Why? What? What is this? Where's the context? Do you know how many game companies utilize off-the-shelf assets? A lot of them. And NVIDIA has the whole um, I'm blanket meta. MetaHumans, right? Where you can literally just download that stuff. And and the Unreal Engine also has another service. It's like a marketplace and you can go in <laughs> and you could just get the assets. That's so strange. It's truly a miracle that Power World was born, that it was completed, and that it turned out to be such a fun game, he wrote. VGC has asked Pocket Pair for comment on this story. Power World is described by its creator as an action-adventure survival game. The accusations of plagiarism around some of its character designs doesn't appear to have bothered players much. Exactly. I'm not seeing it. At the time of the publishing, Power World has very positive reviews on Steam. In Europe, the EU is moving to regulate AI. Well... <laughs> They have a 108 million. They'll, it's been out two days. They have 108 million dollars to fight any lawsuits that come their way. Good luck. I I am a little upset that this is the reaction to it. I think I'm more upset because I feel like this isn't the the common response. I'm not seeing a big uproar about the potential use of AI or anything like that. I see one person and one person is not like a, a sweeping problem. So I don't know what this is. This is the source that they link to. This is pal world. It's trans. It's just auto translated. It's note and it says it's from Pocket Pair, January 16th. So this was a few days ago. Table of contents. Just because you have money doesn't mean you can make interesting games. What? A coincidental story called Power World where your fate will be decided in three days. 
Just because you have money doesn't mean you can make interesting games. For three years after developing Craftopia, I have been making a game called Power World. It will finally be released three days later, in three days, I think. This is cool, and here's the launch trailer. The road to this point has been long. Clapper Dan says, Poke fans cl clamoring Power World ripped off Pokemon, but forget that Pokemon ripped off the original Dragon Quest. There's artwork that proves this is true. I hear you, Clapper Dan. Like, there's this argument that somebody says, like, no idea is original. Everybody's thought of something. Me doing live streams, like, as a, as a poor example, probably. Like, am I ripping off somebody else that does live streams? Yeah, I'm ripping off Asmongold, obviously. But it's <laughs> it's my unique spin on it because it's me, you know? Everybody has sort of their own interpretation about things. Anyway. The road to this point has been long. Looking back, I feel like I took a really big detour. It's a series of unnecessary failures. I stumbled over and over again in places I shouldn't have stumbled over if I had known. I didn't know things the industry experts should know. Because we were a group of amateurs. How am I going to do this? I started out not knowing everything. And you persevered. And you figured stuff out. However, that detour led me to make connections with people and form the team I have today. It was because we were a group of amateurs that we were able to create a method that was not bound by industry conventions. How is the takeaway from this inspiring post? We were all amateurs. We made a few games. They weren't a big hit. Power World comes out. I'm so excited about it coming out. You know, we're just a small team and we persevered and we tr we did things our own way. This used to be a success story. Good to see you, Master Chief. <laughs> Master Chief. If we, a company called Pocket Pair, were a group of professionals from the game industry, had raised funds and were in a cash-rich state, the game Power World would not have been born in this world. Just because you have money doesn't mean you can make interesting games. That's been very proven. I, I would say money has corroded a lot of m money has been very problematic in the games industry. Like we're seeing games that are $400 million to make, right? And they're just forgetting that you need to have a fun design philosophy at the, at the, that's your bedrock. It's not retention metrics. It's not figuring out how to get more microtransactions into your store. And people are super fatigued by the trend chasing. They just want to see the passionate creations again. And and it's interesting that um, we're seeing companies depart from what people want. Like I, I think Rocksteady is a really good example, right? They're They're trying to try something different maybe they're tired of making batman style games and they just really wanted to make suicide squad i mean i i get that you're you're trying something new this time but it's just not resonating with people not yet we'll we'll see what happens when it comes out but the, there's a there's a group of dedicated people who are very excited about it but for the most part people are pretty sour on it The first game that couldn't be released. Actually, the first game that we Pocket Pair created was not able to be released to the public. After two years of development, they couldn't find a publisher. It's already eight years ago now, around 2016, when I was 27 years old. He's 35 now. I had never really made a game, but for some reason, I had the confidence that I could make an interesting game. So I started making mobile games with uh, Wee Ray, my junior at university. I quit the large company he joined. He joined as a new graduate after a month older to seriously work on developing the game. What like what what would the what would the takeaway be there? One employee fresh out of college joined the team. Yeah, eight years ago. Anyway. It took me three years to quit JP JP Morgan. That's a profitable job. Where I joined as a new graduate. He quit after only a month. The more talented people are the sooner they leave the company. He was probably better than me. We worked hard to develop our first full-scale commercial game. We never compromised on the pursuit of making the game more fun. He reworked the game many times and created innovative and interesting game. It's translated from Japanese, so I apologize for anything. There were many difficulties. The prototype was made in one day and then scrapped. Piles of prototypes 
piled up every day, and most of them were scrapped. Along the way, we also changed development engine from COCOS 2DX to Unity. This is because I felt a strong need to switch to Unity if I wanted to make a 3D game. All existing code and assets and assets were discarded. Everything about how to handle the game engine started from scratch. Motivation also decreases. Changing the engine does not create something new. It was very difficult, but I managed to do it. Two years have passed since then. This is a very long post, but this is one of the most inspiring game development posts I've read in a very long time. And I, I find it really unfortunate that the takeaway, instead of celebrating the success, like most people are, they found like one person who was accusing them of AI art generation. And they, I, I love VGC, but this one's a little upsetting. Yeah, it's from Andy. Damn, I really like Andy too. Andy, I don't like this one, man. <laughs> I think it's a little strange. It's one person complaining about it. Okay, and and onion mu, and somebody who deleted a tweet. We'll see what happens. Let's move on to the next one. Let's talk about Satya Nadella's comments. Now, Tom Warren posted this not that long ago. I'm going to turn up the audio for this one. Let's hear what they said. Turn on audio. Jacob asks about the health and future of Xbox. Satya, could you give an update on our gaming business? Yeah, we, obviously, we're very, very excited about uh, everything that's going on in gaming, especially uh, with uh, the close of Activision, yeah. Blizzard. Um, and King, we, we, we think that now we have the ability to really do what we always set out to do, which is build great games and deliver them to folks across all platforms, right? Which is Xbox or, uh, and consoles, the PCs, and now even including mobile gaming and cloud mm -hmm. gaming. So we're excited about the future. We want to do our very best work in gaming. Uh, it's a core business for us. But also, I see tremendous synergy between what we're doing up and down the AI stack. Uh, I always say Microsoft's not a conglomerate. We have one platform that we express through multiple different addressable markets, and gaming is yeah. one. Uh, so when I think about uh, AI, what we're doing at the infrastructure layer or what we will do at the edge, uh, uh, you know, it's sort of the same set of transistors that first were reused for graphics. Guess what? Are being used uh, for... Uh, AI, so you can connect the dots and see why gaming is going to be more strategic to us. Jacob, what's the controversy? <laughs> what's the controversy that Activision Blizzard games are going to continue to be multiple platform? Here, here's what here's what uh, Tom said. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella on the future of Xbox, and then he quotes what was just said in the thing: uh, Xbox and consoles, PC, mobile gaming, and cloud gaming. That's been their strategy since. I mean, they That's, said that uh, they said as much. Maybe and and this is from uh, Bloomberg Live, I want to say. Oh, no. OK, so Bloom the Bloomberg Live thing. This is another section that's seeing some controversy here. Uh, Nadell is perhaps the most deserving CEO anyway. So there was another controversy where Satya Nadella talked about. Games coming to more platforms. They said they were going to do this. Tim Stewart, who was also mentioned, has been coming up a lot lately. If I think when you put it together with Tim Stewart's comments, it's clear they're thinking of select Xbox games going cross platform. It's a bit of a change of strategy, not announcing anything broadly here, but our mission is to bring our first party experiences and our subscription services to every screen that can play games, Stewart said. That means smart TVs. That means mobile devices. That means what we would have thought of as competitors in the past, like PlayStation and Nintendo. I, I think I've made my stance clear on this. If you haven't been watching my content, if a game like Hi-Fi Rush goes multi-platform, Hi-Fi Rush, I think, had 3 million players, not, not in sales. And then um, what was the other one that was popping up in the news? Uh, sea of Thieves, a multiplayer game, goes multi-platform. And they're testing the waters to see how it does. 
I don't think that's going to be overall detrimental to the Xbox brand. I think it'll expand Xbox awareness and get more people in the Xbox ecosystem. And I think at the end of at the end of all that, that would be a hugely positive thing for the Xbox brand. I think doing it with a few games is a good way to test the waters. Tom Warren continues. I'm going to have Tom Warren on the show again. Uh, do one of those interviews in February, I think. Is Microsoft about to launch Xbox exclusives on PlayStation and Nintendo Switch? Here are my thoughts on the rumors and the comments from Microsoft's executives. So here's Tom Warren's take on it. Let's just go to the quotes. We talked about the Tim Stewart thing. Phil Spencer was quick to respond to fans questioning the future of Xbox, making it clear to Windows Central days later that Microsoft has no plans to bring Xbox Game Pass to PlayStation and Nintendo. That's largely out of Microsoft's control anyway, as Sony and Nintendo dictate what launches on their platforms, just like Microsoft does with Xbox. Spencer didn't refute Stewart's comments about bringing our first party experiences to rivals, though. And then Nate the Hate, we've talked about that where he mentioned that Sea of Thieves might be going multi-platform. Uh, Microsoft has previously released, yeah, this is important to note, Ori games on the Nintendo Switch, which were developed by Moon Studios and published by Xbox Game Studios. Sea of Thieves was developed as a key Xbox exclusive by a Microsoft Game Studio. So if it ev eventually appears on PlayStation, that would mark a new strategy for Xbox. And honestly, I think the strategy is fine. Sea of Thieves came out, what? How many years ago? Seven years ago? It's been a long time. I, I don't personally think that this, like, I think this is such a nothing burger. When when did Sea of Thieves come out? Okay, so it initially came out in 2018. 19, 20, 21, 2, 3, 4. It's been six years since the game came out. Some people are saying seven, 2017. Let's look, let me go to Wikipedia. Windows and Xbox One in March of 2018. Then it came to Series X and S in 2020. Here, here's Wikipedia. You see it over here, right? So um, th this rumor, like a game that's been out for six, seven years, going to another platform, ESO's multi-platform, it's going to stay multi-platform. Call of Duty is going to stay multi-platform. Those are technically Xbox IP now. Microsoft will still have content exclusive to their ecosystem. Indiana Jones is going to be console exclusive. Hellblade 2 is going to launch Hellblade exclusive. They've admitted they lost the console war. Xbox isn't going anywhere. They're still going to develop consoles. I, I do think we are going to a digital future, and I think a lot of people aren't going to like that. But... but Everybody expresses their anger and frustration about things, but what are you actively going to do about that? I think you're still going to get the console, right? What else we got here? Uh, meanwhile, Matt Piscatella revealing some sales stats. Late addition to the thread, Xbox Series set a new lifetime high in U.S. unit sales during the month of December. The previous unit sales high for Xbox Series was set in December 2021. Shout out to uh, Welfare JBP for the question. What was the Series S and X split like in December? Just shy of two thirds were Series X. So Xbox just had a lifetime high of sales for their consoles. Like this whole narrative, it's always compared to PlayStation and how what well PlayStation's doing. If you compare PlayStation and how the Switch is doing, like, oh, PlayStation's over, right? So it's Xbox's third in console sales. I think they were at like 30 million in console sales. I don't know what they're at now. PlayStation's at 50. And Nintendo's at 136 million units sold or something like that. So like, when I hear people say that Xbox is a failure, I'm like, a failure, like compared to, if you look... At PlayStation, how they're doing, they sold less units. Does that make them a failure? No. They're still making millions of dollars. <laughs> hey, you know what? I want Destin wants to make a new console and I want to sell 30 million of them. And you know what? Internet, you can call me a failure. Yeah, huge failure selling 30 million consoles. 
Dreamcast would have killed to sell 30 million consoles. Uh, one note, though, we've seen that Satya Nadella took compensation away from his, his yearly bonus away from console subscription services. And I, I think Game Pass is less of a less of a play here. Subs subscription growth has flattened and sub services on console and PC platform accounts for only 10% of total video game content spending in the US. I get that some people want to protect their preferred model, but the idea that subs will become dominant is unsupported by data. Subs have been additive, more additive than cannibalistic and offer players, devs, and pubs more choice in how to play or how to go to market. Fear mongering on this topic is quite unnecessary. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't really know what else to say. It's, it's unfortunate because I really like subscription services personally. I like to use them and I think they're great, but some people don't like them. Uh, Congrats to Xbox for having a huge console sales success. Phil Spencer congratulated Pal World. Oh, okay. We gotta we gotta go back to Pal World for a second. He he just recorded himself watching the game had a million concurrence. What the fuck? <laughs> so Bucky is the community manager at Pocket Pair. Yeah, I'm so happy for them, honestly. Like, I hope the AI thing blows over. And the VGC article, like, Andy's talking about what's going on. What, what are the, I bet the quote te tweets are roasting this article. Let's see. This game may end up being the biggest factor in regulation of generative AI for games if Nintendo gets evolved. We don't know that generative AI was used. If we find out, then that'll be interesting. It's funny how we spent the last few months talking about YouTube plagiarism and AI stealing from creators being bad only to reward a game doing both with 2 million plus sales. Has it been confirmed that they use generative AI? I read the article. I didn't see that confirmation. Wait till you see the other games that dev is making. Art Imposter? Yeah, we saw that one. But that's not the one popping off. Andy Robson talks about how we could use AI, could be used to generate new Pokemon designs. It's kind of wild how much people will look away from this stuff. It's something they like, especially right after all the talk about standing with creatives. Is, is there proof that they used AI? And I mean, I don't know. I'm a little conflicted on how to feel about it. I don't mean to keep bringing this up. I just find it weird that like everybody's up in arms about it. There's no confirmation that they used AI in the blog post that I read. They said that the artist drew the characters. So if you're drawing. Everybody's so mad about AI. There's a lot of comments here that are mad about AI. And it's all quote tweets from that one article. But I'm going to read their full blog post. But uh, what I read on it was. I don't know why I have this open. A lot of these people have other things going on. Uh PlayStation fans knocked Starfield not winning any awards at the VGA's news last. Neither did Spider-Man 2. Pal World is the hi-fi of 2024 for Xbox. T-pop fever. Good, good comment. So this one's really small, but I was pretty excited when I saw it. Idle Sloth, unofficial producer, caught this. There was a, a tease for Indy. Oh, we're, we're not going to play audio. Pretty sure that song's copyrighted. Check this out. So Indiana Jones has utilized his whip to hide on the roof from an enemy. Think of so clearly stealth's gonna play an interesting role and in how that plays out. That's really, really cool, I think. I I per I personally 
really like this. It's like he's using his whip to hide. Man, what is this game going to be? I'm I am not joking. I am super excited about what this game is going to be. I'm very excited about Indiana Jones. Very, very excited about Indiana Jones. Uh, what else we got going on here? Oh, Halo Season 2, the show. How are we feeling about this? The, the artwork is on point. I'll say that. That's got to be uh, the Elite, the Shangili, the, uh, the, <laughs> I forgot his name, the Elite that we don't kill and then he like falls from grace. I don't know why I'm blanking on it. His helmet's off. Put your helmet on. Anyway, so Fall of Reach is one of the best stories. If, if you've ever read the books, Fall of Reach is probably one of the best books of all time. The posters spell Halo. Nice. Really? I didn't make that connection. Halo. Where's the H? I don't see H, but H is this a, a L that's definitely the O. And then what else? We got some more art here. One of the Spartans that fall or Spartan armor. Bunch of Shangili. That's pretty cool. And then we got a real cool shot of a pelican. No, not the pelican, a ghost. No, <laughs> dang it. Oh my goodness. What are the airship, that, the Covenant airships called? Whatever, the flying ship that the Covenants fly. I'm really bad at names this early in the morning. Rise from the fall. Put, oh, he's got a banshee. Thank you. Banshee phantoms. Thank you. My brain is fried this morning. Do we, are we going to give Halo season two a chance? I was really sour on the first season. I appreciate all the angry <laughs> comments. Uh, I, I'm, I'll give it a shot. Like I'll talk about it on the channel. I'm not super excited as a Halo fan, I am malding right now. I'm sorry. I bl I'm blanking on all the names. So the banished are the brutes that are like not friendly with the covenant and the whole religious sect, right? What was the name of the Shangili who was branded heretic? They call him heretic. No, heretic's the chief. Oh my God. It's been too long since I played Halo 2. Somebody please tell me so I don't go crazy. Arbiter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. I just lost 10 viewers. Yeah. Keith David. <laughs> I just lost 10 viewers because I couldn't remember the freaking Arbiter's name. Uh, Special Nick. There were a bunch of like little stories from Special Nick's show, but the thing he was talking about last week was that Final Fantasy 16 is potentially going to get an Xbox port. Final Fantasy 16 was the mystery game that Nick got the DM about last week. Whoa. Nick has heard so many things about the 7 remake coming to Xbox, but the one purveying thing I was always used to get told about 7 is don't hold your breath. Sony seems to not let that one go. That's whatever. Speaking of the case of, of, of Square Enix, Nick, sure and clearly say. Microsoft is building that relationship. We heard of past things where Square is trying to come around. They brought Phil Spencer on stage. Phil Spencer and all of that. Mm -hmm. What's the chances of us getting Final Fantasy 7 or 16 finally this year? Is or have you? you heard anything? Or I would, yeah, I'm hoping this year. Okay, this is a four minute clip. <laughs> but basically, Nick. Final Fantasy 16. I got the DM and they were like, we go. if you want something for the rumor mill, Final Fantasy 16 is getting an Xbox port. And I'm like, I don't want to touch that. Okay. So that's the rumor mill. That f I don't want to play this whole clip. Go check out their show. In the, I'll put it in the description if you watch this not live. But yeah, Final Fantasy 16 is, is making the port. 
and that was teased last week. I think that would be a huge get for Xbox. And we know that 16, according to Square, wasn't meeting the sales expectations. Nothing meets Square's sales expectations, but they were talking about that also. Apparently, um, Skylight Corrective Strategy Driven Design Studio is assisting Obsidian on Avowed and Compulsion Games on South of Midnight development. Avowed, even though Pentiment had launched before Avowed, our team actually started in on Avowed earlier when we first developed the name and logo. Late last year, we were able to collaborate with Xbox and Obsidian teams to develop key art that was revealed yesterday. South of Midnight couldn't be happier for our friends at Compulsion who were recognized for their fantastic South of Midnight trailer. Such an inspiring team to have the opportunity to collaborate with. And I brought up his LinkedIn here. Bro, David Cipriano works at Skylight Collective, helping out with Avowed, and also talked about South of Midnight. Cool. A little bit of collaboration going on there. Okay, what do you want to do next? Do you want to read this article from Pure Xbox about how Game Pass changed their quest and talk about that a little bit? Or is that just a thing Destin cares about? We can, you know what? Let's do some reacts because I had a really good one queued up. And and if you've watched in the past, the way that we do the reacts videos, um, I record them like they're a video and I do the sign off and everything so I can just post it later in the week. So don't leave <laughs> when I do the reacts. Uh, where was the one I had? Okay. This one looked interesting to me. And it's a... There's actually two... Man. There's two really good ones that I wanted to react to today. Maybe three. Let's do three. Barely capitalized. Uh, that's like a. I'd be reacting to a podcast. This. Okay. So. Remember, I'm gonna record this. AAA games will probably destroy the industry. This is from Solari. Whoops. And we're gonna be talking about this one right now let's hear what they have this to say this video is brought to you by the wonderful people who support the channel on patreon if you'd like to help out you can get ad free early access to new videos at patreon.com so solari has a patreon the release of a triple a game is almost always a big deal to the point where it's practically a worldwide event the hype train usually begins a couple of years in advance, often through a teaser trailer that gives us a glimpse at what to expect, and on some occasions what could basically be considered a high resolution GIF with a title drop. <laughs> yeah, Metroid Prime 4, you remember that one? That was was it six years ago? I thought I thought it was even longer than that. Um yeah, that's been insane. I thought 4 became Metroid Dread. Anyway, let's continue Followed on. by years of silence. In the run-up to the big day, we get to see some longer trailers, developer diaries, gameplay footage, and if we're... It's called marketing. It's all marketing. All those assets that you see leading up to launch, they have a marketing path up to launch, and then they launch their games. And that's the strategy lucky maybe even a demo we're also encouraged to pre-order games to secure our copy as soon as possible even if it's a digital version with no stock limits but in exchange you can get some bonus stuff like exclusive items or maybe a collectible if you yeah all of all of this in the industry i don't mind pre-order bonuses too much i don't mind like little collectible things it's an upsell tactic right and if they can pre-sell their game and go gold or whatever, like basically cover their costs, then anything after that is just profit, right? So I don't think that's what actually, that's not actually what going, going gold means, but I have to imagine once you hit a certain threshold of pre-orders, you're probably thinking, okay, our development costs are covered. We're gonna be okay going forward. And this stuff just gives them a little bit extra cash. I'm all for it purchase well, the physical edition maybe not all for it <laughs> then there's special editions like deluxe or ultimate editions where 
Uh, if you pay more, you get more stuff. Whether it's worth it is subjective, but yeah. generally I'd say no. Agreed. But nonetheless, it's tempting for many players. When the big day comes and the anticipation has reached its peak, millions of players try their best to start playing as early as possible, staying up past midnight to be there when the digital version unlocks or refreshing the tracking updates of the physical delivery. You uh, I do that. I I'm curious, how many of y'all stay up late for digital editions of games. I, I'm older, so I don't, I'm just exhausted by the end of the day usually. I don't do that very often. Do you stay up late waiting for a digital release? I'm, I'm wondering if that's actually a thing. Load up the game after a modest day one patch downloads, then you and other players around the world get to be part of a major event, to be involved in a grand conversation, share your experiences, ask for and offer tips, make memes, fan art, videos, streams, and more. It's almost like a long awaited celebration, but even the biggest of celebrations can turn sour if the smallest of things go wrong. It's sadly become all too common that major game releases have been released in less than favorable conditions it yeah and you know what laura fryer has a whole video about how day one patches laura fryer worked at like xbox during the launch she worked at epic games on the gears of war franchise and she talks about how day one patches aren't how it should be the day one patch should be to like catch some major thing that's discovered but the game should still launch in a stable state it's being like used as a it's being used improperly and and people are really really tired of it issues like unstable performance bugs of all shapes yeah. and sizes server issues for online games or worst of all a game that's not as good as you thought it would be it can be <laughs> demoralizing to say the least if you spent months or possibly years following an upcoming game in the hopes that it'll be as amazing as the developers say it is and bought into the hype generated by other players and it's if it's demoralizing to us, imagine how the developer feels having worked on it for seven years. And then they release Redfall. It's gotta be awful. If the game falls even slightly short of expectations, the feeling of disappointment can be strong. And some players yep. regrettably become unreasonably angry to the point where they start harassing developers or any- Don't do this. Don't like go mass spam developers. I, I don't think this is a healthy response to it. Just don't buy, just don't buy it. Get a refund. Like, especially if you buy on Steam, Steam has a really great refund policy. If you know a game's a stinker, just get your refund. That's the loudest message that you can send, you know? Anyone else involved in the making of the game for that matter. A disappointing game isn't necessarily a bad game. It's just not the game that people expected it to be. And the expectations people have for many AAA titles can be immeasurable, something which I'm sure puts an intense amount of pressure on the people who make these games. Here, here's the thing. I, I think expectations realistically are don't lie in your marketing material, right? Like don't sell us a fake bill of goods. I think is the saying launch stable enough that the game's playable. It's like, so keep your promise is part one. Part two is launch stable enough that it can be playable. Don't tell me the PS4 version of cyberpunk is going to look and feel the way your marketing material said. I, cyberpunk is such a crazy example because they demoed that game on old hardware and they made it look like it was like great they did a live stream of it on xbox one right and they're like yeah that's how the game's gonna look and everyone's like oh great yeah i'll pre-order and then that was not what launched and they're like whoops we didn't know you literally played it on a live stream how did you not know how did you not know it was running at 10 frames per second it isn't easy and i do think i i think there's don't harass developers obviously like that's not what you should do, but you should be loud about how you spend your money <laughs> and don't support games that rip you off. Basically there's a refund policy, especially like on steam, there's a refund policy. A lot of games have refund policies, but yeah.
there's no reason to go to like the person who did the rigging and harass them on Twitter. It doesn't, it's not However, AAA healthy. games are made under a mandate to appeal not only to the largest audience possible, but to publishers, investors, shareholders, and to be released by a deadline, that all important release date chosen to ensure their game is available to purchase at the optimal time of year, usually in the run up to the holidays or around springtime and that release date is often non-negotiable, even if the developers feel that the game isn't ready yet. The release of a game, whether it's disappointing or even good, can also be hampered by the inclusion of aggressive monetization, something yeah. which I spoke about at length in my previous video, where players are regularly reminded this looks like I'm going to have to react to this one too. Games are an expensive time stealing nightmare. He see, like, obviously I'm not the, I don't claim to be super smart or anything like that. I'm just an average guy that talks about games for a living. Right? So the way that I say it, and he seems very intelligent, the way that I say it is we are being forced into these grindy games that hold retention metrics higher than any other metric. Why? Because the higher the retention metric, the more likely you are to spend money in the property. But unfortunately, the retention metric strategy works on like, what, 5% of the users? That means 95% of people are just like, I am so exhausted by this grind. I hate it. So I'm betting that's what he talks about. Games are an expensive time-stealing nightmare minded in the game's menus that if they want their character to look nicer or gain some gameplay benefits, if they pay more than the initial cost of entry, they can enhance their experience. And somebody just said happened with No Man's Sky, right? What happened with No Man's Sky was they broke their promise. They promised one thing and then it launched and it wasn't that thing. If they would have launched in early access or they would have said, you know, we're launching with an earlier version of the game, they would have kept their promise. So keep your promise of the marketing material and make sure the game runs at launch. That's what I think that's largely what gamers want, right? The common defense for this from publishers, developers, and even some consumers is that games are expensive to produce, so they need to make money where they can. There is, however, some truth to this. Game production has some eye-wateringly high costs, yeah. but there's a reason behind that that isn't always due to the demand of players, but an industry that's perpetuated the belief that they're a necessity, but more on that later. It's fairly well known at this point that the video game industry brings in a ludicrous amount of money from consumers. Accurate. It's by far the highest grossing entertainment market in the world, earning more than the movie and music. Okay, so 192.7 billion, 120 billion for print and ebooks? Really? Books do better than home and theatrical releases? Is that true? Are you not entertained? Entertained? Estimated global revenue from video games, books, filmed entertainment, and recorded music. Wow. I had no idea books were such a huge industry still. I, I would figure everybody's on the internet or something. Music industry combined, something which has been an ongoing trend for years now. The industry for video games has been growing steadily pretty much since Nintendo entered the market in the 1980s and shows no sign of stopping. The average age of a person that plays games regularly is around 35 years old. 35 to 44. I, I think it shows no sign of stopping, but it's definitely changing towards mobile, like mobile is the biggest growth sector. But yeah, gaming's not going anywhere. Old, a demographic which has a somewhat decent amount of disposable income to spend on luxury products. And even though there was a significant amount of stigma towards gaming as a hobby. Producer brain. I really wish he'd reduce his headspace. I just, <laughs> he has too much headspace in the video. And like, I'm cropping it, so it's like even worse than this, but yeah. In the 90s and 2000s, their popularity has never really- Maybe he's waned. doing it for the punch. We're now at a point in time where around 40% of the world's population plays video games. And given that gaming as a hobby has essentially been normalized among children and teenagers, that number is guaranteed to grow to the point where the majority of the world will be playing. A growing market brings with it the opportunity to increase profits exponentially through yeah. whatever means possible, even if that means creating and releasing a product that fails to deliver on all fronts. 
With AAA games, if there's one factor that they all share, is that they're largely designed to appeal to the widest market possible. Almost every large budget release over the past two generations of consoles can be considered an action game in which the player controls a character yeah. that engages in combat against enemies. The form of combat can vary, but ultimately these games... All the games he's showing are fantastic games. Really, really, really awesome games are people playing a protagonist that beats the baddies. Of course, this can depend on the context of a game's story. I don't want to paint with broad strokes and say that every game is a story of good versus evil, since there are numerous explorations of grey zones within games. But as objectives go in AAA games, it's generally a case of you versus them. The general progression in these games is that you face stronger enemies the further you get, face off against bosses, add weapons or skills yeah. to your arm arsenal and travel through new parts of the game's world. There are various ways in how these goals are achieved, but big budget games, especially the more successful ones, tend to follow this template. And I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't an entertaining formula, something I've enjoyed numerous times over. And it, it is, but I, I think when you get older, I think you start to see the carrot and the stick. And Right now, I'm playing like a pretty different genre, like Pal World's a very different genre for me, and I'm having a good time with it. So it's it's really nice that we have sort of this breakup in the industry right now where not every game is a linear story adventure. And there's some really, really great experiences like Pal World's super fun. There's a game I'm going to be talking about next week, probably on the live stream, probably play it on the live stream. And I'm excited to tell you about how much I like it. So yeah, more on that soon. And I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. What exactly is the sandbox? Oh, we got the ad. 3D metaverse. The building blocks Skip. are boxes. There is an argument to be made, though, that this template has become a problem. Familiarity yeah, it's is fatiguing. Comforting. When you know what to expect from something, you can still gain enjoyment from it. But it can put people in a position where they become more reluctant to see what else might be available to them. For a well, well, I think that we had so much time during COVID to play whatever we wanted that we hit, we hit this point where we had experienced everything and we knew what the next thing was going to be and people sort of fatigued. So that's why there was like over hiring. That's why there's all these layoffs now because they thought, oh, it's just going to like explode from this point forward. And that just didn't happen. People got all the gaming that they wanted and they were like, you know what? I kind of want to go outside. At least some of us, some people went outside. For example, let's say there's a person that when they want to eat dinner, they go to McDonald's every time. Ignoring the potential nutritional issues with a <laughs> diet that's almost exclusively fast food, the reason someone might make this choice is because they know what to expect from McDonald's. They know and like the taste of a Big Mac, the fries, the supposedly unique taste of Yes, I want McDonald's now. <laughs> and if they fancy something a bit different, they can try other things off the menu, but still have some sense of familiarity comfort. It's the same reason why most of us have our comfort foods. I personally enjoy a good donut when I'm in need of a pick-me-up, like these apple cider donuts that I made recently. One person's McDonald's may be another's mac and cheese Those or donuts look great. grilled cheese sandwich. Familiarity is nice, but it's also restrictive. The person who enjoys McDonald's every day may be comforted, but they're also missing out. Where's he going with this analogy? <laughs> Out on the world of other amazing dishes and potentially their new favorite food. Mass appeal products are kind of like McDonald's in that you have some idea of what you're getting into when you buy it. Yes. I don't mean to say that AAA games are as underwhelming as McDonald's, but they have become safe on a mechanical level. Yes. Oh my God, yes. Diablo 4 is a really, really good example. I Maybe that's part of it. Like games don't want to challenge you too much anymore. Or they challenge you in ways that are just like silly, you know? That's super, that's a super interesting way to put it because mechanically, I feel like a lot of games have been simplified. And then a lot of gamers, when they get presented something like the, the Path of Exile skill tree, they like freak out. They're like, oh, I don't know what to do. That seems complicated. Just give me like, three options and I pick one and see what happens. Um, that might be part of it. 
things have changed quite a bit. Familiarity is the enemy of experimentation. And even though big budget titles have given us some great innovations, both in gameplay and narratives, it's hard to say whether they help the medium grow in any substantial way. Not too long ago, games were much cheaper to produce. Yeah, they have to play it safe. So like Suicide Squad is a big bet for Rocksteady. And a lot of people are really concerned because they're like, hey, I don't, I don't like that that much. And the, the problem is they have a winning for formula with the Batman games. They could have made a Superman game or some other superhero game and seen massive success. But they're like, let's do Suicide Squad. Let's do this totally different thing from what we've done. And like, that's a $400 million bet. And it, it could be very problematic for the whole industry taking taking bets like that and quicker to make. They were made by smaller teams, and mm -hmm. although they were created with the intent of earning a profit, there was less pressure to remain within the confines that were defined by the market's more successful products. And I don't think Nintendo... Nintendo Mario games ha have changed, but like it's the same jump on the bad guys formula. Sometimes we get like a Super Mario Galaxy. That's a bit of a departure, but I, I don't think Nintendo gets all that crazy. I, I think that's a, a bad example. I think Suicide Squad is a, a better example where it's a pretty big departure from what Rocksteady is known for. But I get his point. As such, there was more room for experimentation. Creators were able to take advantage of the opportunity to create games which consumers may not know that they would like and would go on to influence and innovate the games that came after it, possibly even creating entirely new genres. In other words, developers had the privilege of being able to take a gamble and yeah. lose. Whereas in today's market, failure to meet expectations is often met with major repercussions, including job losses, studio shutdowns, or even an aversion to experimenting again. Leading So he here's my thing on that, right? everybody's going to take their shot and try and try and do the best. And I, and I do agree with this presentation and this person about how that stifles creativity. And, and that's definitely concerning, but that's sort of like the nature of everything in the world, right? Like a McDonald's competitor could open up and they could be just fine, but maybe they don't catch on like McDonald's does. That's just the nature of the world we live in. That's how, that's how it works. Some games are massively successful or some burger joints are massively successful and some just don't hit. I had a cookie business for two years. My cookies were phenomenal. <laughs> they were really, really good cookies, but they didn't, ca they didn't catch. Like I'm not a millionaire from the cookie business, right? Things come, they go. Some are huge successes, some aren't. And if these studios play it too safe, then they run into a danger. If they play it too risky, they run into a danger. And everybody chasing the games as a service is definitely a danger. And higher ups to demand that the future products they create adhere to the demands of the mass market. Many of these games were made to be loved for what they were and not because they're similar to other popular products on the market. Titles like Super Mario Brothers, Pokemon, Final Fantasy VII, yep. Metal Gear Solid, Doom, Resident Evil, Half-Life, Ocarina of Time, Shadow of the Colossus, Halo, Dark Souls, and more have all had their DNA included and altered in some kind of ways in countless games that followed it, and they all have a place among the greats for that very reason. Sure, some of them were expensive to produce, at least relative to the time and the size of the industry during that period, but they were still a gamble. Conceptually, they were unique or different enough to be considered a risk. For we, we still see gambles all the time in, in modern day, but not from the AAA space. The AAA space is a business, period. It's just something that we have to get used to. Microtransactions aren't going anywhere because people buy them. As long as people keep buying microtransactions, they're not going to go anywhere. The upsell tactics are continually going to be there. But every once in a while, we get a studio that cares about making art, a studio like Larian, the, the pal world team, maybe not, but we get surprises like pal world, which is embroiled in this drama about using AI generative art. Potentially there's been no confirmation of that. And they did say that they draw, hand drew a lot of the characters. So we'll see how that one pans out. Point being, 
I think the AAA space has to play it safe, and that's somewhat problematic. But I think Final Fantasy 16 is a pretty big departure from the previous Final Fantasies, and it's fantastic. So I, I don't know. I think some are guilty of it. And then like Rock said, he's taking a big gamble with Suicide Squad. Like even if we hate it, they, they did something different. For many, notably in the West, Final Fantasy VII was a completely foreign concept, given that it was a turn-based combat game where you waited turns to attack your enemies, but it sold extremely well, creating a massive legacy which still continues to this day. Dark Souls came out at a time oh, yeah. in which games had a growing tendency to hold the player's hand, tell them where to go, what to do, and at the same time offer them a power fantasy where they felt like an unstoppable force. All these Dark games Souls, are so on good. the other hand, put you in an overbearingly hostile world, gave you limited means of survival, no direction, and had you learn by dying repeatedly. But despite all this, it was a runaway success. To the point where it and its predecessor Demon Souls created yeah. the Soulsborne genre which spawned numerous imitators, including Neo, Lords of the Fallen, Remnants, Lies of P, and more. Its success eventually resulted in the creation of From Software's Elden Ring, the second yes. best-selling game of last year, which is quite shocking given that the modern market is largely dominated by games which offer more accessibility in regard I don't think every game studio needs to change the formula massively every time. If you go work at From Software, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be working on Armored Core or you're going to be working on a Soulsborne-like game, right? Because that's their craft. That's what they've mastered. And I think that's okay. I think the problem is a little bit more nuanced with these bets and, and innovation, right? I, I think Elder Scrolls does a lot of fantastic things that the previous games in the series didn't do. Like, just, it, there was something really, really special about Elder Scrolls. I don't know what it was, but clearly it resonated with people in a way that no other game in their in their series history had. And from software is fantastic. I, I think there are times when a studio will depart too far from what they're known for, and that is that's problematic. In regards to difficulty, an Elden Ring is not an easy game for most people regardless of what its diehard fans may say. The point being, creating games that aren't designed from the ground up to appeal to the masses can... I think, you know what? I, I think he's wrong on that. El I think Elden Ring was very massively successful. Like, all those people buying and playing the Elden Ring, they're not all gamers. I know people who are not gamers who played Elden Ring and wouldn't stop talking about it. Elden Ring was some sort of cultural phenomena. Nothing. I've never seen anything like that. I think Baldur's Gate 3 is another example. Like there's people that don't play games normally playing games. And Elden Ring was one of those games. So I do think Elden Ring had mass appeal. Unlike any of the other Soulsborns. So that's one I would disagree on lead to something special. I'm not the first to say this, but in general, the public doesn't really know what it wants. It's only through giving them something different that we can learn about their tastes and we can learn about our own tastes. As much as you like McDonald's, it's good to try another dish every now and then, even if that means risking a bad meal. Variety is a spice of life, right? However, there's a problem with this, and it goes back to what I said earlier. Making and marketing games has become expensive, True. particularly in the AAA space. With something like the movie industry, production budgets and earnings are shared with the public. In Very most bright. cases though, the cost of developing a AAA game is kept as a secret between the publisher and shareholders, making it truly difficult to grasp the average cost. And that's without even factoring in the marketing costs, which in many cases can be nearly identical to production costs. But once again, these are mostly a mystery. Just in the past few years, with inflation taken into account, yeah. three of the top five most expensive games ever have been produced, including Cyberpunk 2077, The Last of Us Part Two, and Horizon Forbidden West. The really? latter two cost over $200 million to produce, and Cyberpunk, according to the developer CD Projekt Red, cost 400 Okay, let's talk about why. Do you know why Cyberpunk costs $483 million? Because it's built from the ground up. 
They built the, the artwork. They built everything. It's a new IP. Last of Us Part Two and Horizon Forbidden West are iterations. And the bang for their buck on that $249 million and that $212 million, well, I, I don't know about Horizon, but I think it would be good, right? They know that if they invest that amount of money into a property, they get a return. Cyberpunk, I imagine they've made back that money or they will with the sequel or they will with Phantom Liberty because they've built the infrastructure to continue building their games. That's why this one's so, so much higher because it's a new thing, right? $83 million adjusted for inflation. Needless to say, but that's a lot of money enough to rival some of Hollywood's biggest film productions. And with bigger costs come bigger risks and a bigger need to mitigate that risk by creating products with mass market appeal that play it safe by catering to gamers' desire for familiarity. One common criticism with PlayStation exclusive titles like Horizon Forbidden West and The Last of Us series is that there's too many similarities between them and they follow a particular formula. Specifically, yeah. high production, story heavy, character driven action games where you play from a third person perspective in an open or semi open world setting. This is but, but here's the thing that is PlayStation's bread and butter single player experiences that take you on a linear experience and tell a amazing compelling story that is playstation's bread and butter and the problem with them going games as a service is it goes against their dna it goes against why everybody everybody follows them and like you can try one of those a year but they're just like we're gonna make 20. it's a mistake this has sort of been the case since Sony started finding momentum during the PS3's lifespan, and it was arguably kicked off by the success of Uncharted 2 by developer Naughty Dog, Charted who have since become the pedigree amazing. for the PlayStation exclusive scene. These exclusives also happen to be visually stunning, to the point where you can practically see the budget in every character model and environment. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that these games are bad. Far from it. Some of these are genuine all-time greats and personal yep. favorites of mine, largely because I'm a sucker for a good story, and many of these games do a damn good job at telling one. I do have to ask though, what are these games doing on a mechanical level that makes them unique? How much are they experimenting or trying something new? As much as I love some of these games, I do have to admit that they are a bit formulaic. He's right. But I, I don't think that's a problem. If you go play Spider-Man and they iterate with fast travel and some of the other technology by like bringing in Miles Morales for a little bit more spice and it does success, successful numbers in terms of sales, uh, I think that's okay. I don't think Insomniac needs to reinvent the wheel. And I, I would love it if they got to like try one new thing every once in a while. I feel like Ratchet is sort of their playground and Spider-Man is their bread and butter. Like you do the bread and butter thing so that you can do the other thing, right? This is how it goes. There's also the fact that many of the big releases that we see these days are sequels from long established franchises, which is what you get when companies become more risk averse and choose to leverage a pre-existing audience rather than funding a new untested intellectual property and hoping it finds success. The question we have to ask though is do AAA games have to be so expensive and what could be gained from making them cheaper? When you have these woke oh. revolutions, it requires all of what? us <laughs> at some point to say no. All right. not to the first question, the answer is kind of a Maybe. One of the problems with current big budget game development is that many deem it to be an unsustainable model. Ex-CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment America, Sean Layden, mm -hmm. who oversaw the releases of numerous AAA titles, said he believes that the industry needs to reconsider the escalating costs of AAA game development. He's absolutely right. Game prices are out of control. They're putting way too much in their budget. Like... I don't, I just don't understand how, how games have gotten that expensive. If there's the ROI there, sure. Keep dumping $200 million into it. But I, I agree with Layden. I, I don't think that games need to cost that much. They just don't. 
and the kind of games that are produced. In regards to this, Sean said the following. I don't think that in the next generation you can take those numbers and multiply them by two and think that you can grow. And added, I think the industry as a whole needs to sit back and go, all right, what are we building? What's the audience? That's the key line. What is the audience's expectation? Marvel Spider-Man 2 didn't need to reinvent the wheel. Just keep telling those great stories, right? Meet the odd, make a promise, keep it, launch in a stable state. Audience expectation. What is the best way to get our story across and say what we need to say? As many of you know, the standard box price of a AAA game is now $70, which is a lot They're of money. are talking about increasing it. I find myself waiting for sales more and more often these days because I can't really justify the purchase of so many big game releases in a single year. But relative to the cost of inflation, the cost of a video game hasn't really increased. Just 10 years ago, 60 US dollars was worth almost $80 at the current rate. But of course, this can vary depending on where you live in the world, like in a recent case where Steam's lazy regional pricing exploded the cost of games in countries such as Argentina and Turkey. The problem is that many gamers see high fidelity, high budget games as the norm now. And some will go as far okay. as avoiding or even ridiculing games that don't live up to the standard set by. Is it just me or does Ragnarok look exactly the same as God of War 2018? I think people like that are really, really in the, in the minority. And I think we keep listening. This has 12 upvotes. Like, <laughs> and it's from two years ago. They're in the minority. There's always going to be 5% of your audience that hate, like 5% of my audience probably hates everything that I do, you know? So I, I, I just don't think that people complaining about the fruit in Halo Infinite are the people we should be listening to its predecessors doing petty things like comparing screenshots between gandalf making a guest appearance <laughs> uh i remember gandalf uh i don't even know if he posts anymore but anyway um yeah stuff like this like this was this was panned everybody made them made fun of that. all the games to demonstrate how the graphics aren't good enough it's an obnoxious mentality that doesn't help anyone, especially. And it's 1% of the market. Most people aren't like that. Most normal people are not like that. Twitter has made it where we feel like we need to respond to every console war tweet. Like it's what everybody thinks. No, it's like 1% of the audience is making the boat comparison. Like the boat comparison that Gandalf made. How many people were like, yeah, the boat animations reused. That's what I care about. Don't listen to those people. <laughs> Actually, the developers who put so much of their time and effort into creating these worlds. But gamer entitlement, what more can you say, really? The games industry is no, of in the same place. No, I bro, you found a post with 15 upvotes and you found another one that was panned. So I, I think there's... What he really needed to say is there's a lot of idiots out there, <laughs> but they don't account for most of the audience. They just don't. As the movie industry right now, in that spending massive amounts of money on a small handful of big projects is safer than spending less money on more projects, something which sounds kind of absurd when you say it out loud, but when you've cultivated an audience to invest in your brand, it makes sense from a business point of view. You can put all your eggs in one basket if you've convinced everyone that your eggs are the best. Look, when you made, when George Lucas made Star Wars, it's a great example, right? Keep making Star Wars. <laughs> Yeah, and keep telling great stories and your your audience is going to be there. Just don't betray them. I know there's been a lot of controversy about the most recent Star Wars films. I like those movies. I think they're fine. I don't go in with like a lot of expectation for for the films. I guess I just want to have a good time. And and I I think that's where most people are. We have to remember that the majority of people aren't as invested as we are in every little detail about like even the halo tv show apparently it was successful enough to warrant a second season
So if you're Naughty Dog and you're making Last of Us or you're making Uncharted, keep making those games. And every once in a while, do a little spinoff team to do something interesting like the Pentiment team did with Xbox, right? Do that. Keep the creative juices flowing. Keep your bread and butter going, but do a little bit of that extra stuff every once in a while to keep your keep your creativity fresh. But as you can surmise, this means that smaller and more unique projects end up taking a back seat, leaving the indie game scene to pick up the slack. In that respect, yeah. I guess we can kind of thank the AAA market. The indie scene grew exponentially as AAA games became the norm. Because of that, we've had... Gotta be honest with you. I am so fatigued by the AAA market lately. I am hyped for all the indie games coming. <laughs> God! Next week, you're going to hear about an indie game that I'm really excited to talk about. And like indie games aren't perfect. Like right now, Pal World is taking off. It's hugely popular. There's a little bit of drama about AI generation potentially being utilized. We don't know. They said they hand drew a lot of them. So, so we don't know what's going on there yet. But point being, the indie scene has been so cool, or at least like the more independent scene, like Larian taking off with Baldur's Gate 3, the Elden Ring games taking off with success um is and then smaller games like pal world exploding it's it's been really really exciting to see people who aren't in the triple a space having massive success because later on we're going to see people take new chances like i think concord from playstation is a good example we don't really know what that game is but it's something new and we'll learn more about it soon some remarkable games that major publishers probably wouldn't have touched otherwise. It also helps that digital distribution made it far easier for game creators to put their work in front of people. I'm not sure that games like Hades, Celeste, oh Hades, yes, Please, Star, better Valley, examples Lisa, than the ones I gave, Disco Elysium would have even made it had the conditions not been right, let alone be successful games. Aside from the intense amount of labor that goes into making AAA games with high fidelity, 4K resolution graphics, one big reason why they take so much time and money to produce is because, in general, they're very long games. If you search for almost any modern AAA title on howlongtobeat.com, you'll find that pretty much every single one of them takes about 20 hours or more just to complete the main quest line, and more if you want to clear the side content. Now, it's understandable That's good. why this is a selling point to a lot of people. If you're spending $70 on a game that you want to get your mileage out of, for that much, it'd be disappointing to be done with it after only five or eight hours. It I, I just want to say something really quick. A lot of people... A lot of people were upset about the idea of Hellblade 2 being similar in length to the first game. I think that is great. I don't particularly care. If that is the experience that the creators wanted to share and show us, wonderful. I don't think we need some falsely inflated missions what what would be better that it's the same length or that they put a bunch of garbage in there where it's like, all right, you know what we need now? We need you to go get five apples. Oh, you got the apples. Good job. Now go get 17 pine cones. You're going to have to go mine in the open world. Oh, you got the pine cones. Thank goodness. Just so that they could say that the game was twice as long. Okay, let's put a bunch of nonsense in the middle of it. No, what what you would really want is just a longer story. But what if the story only takes eight hours to tell? And they're like, yeah, look, we could add more to this, but it, it turns out it's about the same length. And like, this is the story we wrote and that we want to tell. Do we really need to flesh this out more for the value proposition? And that game's only $49.99. So you're, you're already paying 20 bucks less than a seven. Like, that's incredible, right? Okay, look, uh, it's digital only. Uh, because of the distribution savings, we're not going to charge as much. We know that some people will be upset about the, the length, so we've reduced $20 off of the price point. Like, how is that not a win? It's crazy to me. It'd be like paying for a full price movie ticket, and it turns out the movie is only 90 minutes long instead of your typical two and a half hour plus run time. It's not a like problem. Every damn movie seems to be now. Please, just make movies shorter. I've got stuff to do. 90 minutes is fine. There's nothing yep. wrong with long games. For some, like RPGs, Agreed. it's somewhat of a necessity. 
but there are also games where the long runtime works against it. Either way though, the normalization of the 20 plus hour I agree understanding has resulted in extremely lengthy production cycles and of course, rapidly inflating budgets. The gap between AAA releases from major studios can be as long as five years or more, which five to seven sequels with pre-existing assets that can be ported or built upon from previous games in the series. Or in the case of- I, I will say, cause I record these live, but Javier, you're right. No physical edition is a big L. You're absolutely right. Hellblade 2 should have a physical edition. So I don't, I don't mean to like give that a pass. That sucks. And it, and it affects preservation. But I suppose you could take your copy of the game and install it on a disc maybe for, for keeping it, but I agree with that. The finally announced Grand Theft Auto 6, it can be a 12 year window. You can probably thank the cash cow that is GTA Online for that. Less frequent yeah. releases means less chances to earn money for the studios. Greater gambits, bigger budgets, and fewer opportunities for developers to experiment with something different since they're stuck in lengthy cycles of creating huge hits that adhere to the winning formula established. Spitfire says, honestly, AI creating assets could in turn quicken production time and lower the cost of making them. I absolutely agree. I think that's what we're going to see with AI. I think iterations going to be shortened drastically, and I think that's a good thing. I think everybody's hating on AI, but once they see how it's helpful, granted, granted, there's a lot of moral stuff that's accurate and, and totally reasonable to call out, but in the long run, I think it's going to be an amazing tool that will push the industry forward by the industry. I do not want to undermine the work of developers. As I said, I truly believe that many AAA game releases are incredible, but I am left wondering how satisfied they are by being a part of this. If you're someone who works in the trip. Okay. Well, he here's what they do. They go to a different company. Okay. I've released two last of us games. I'm ready to move on or they start their own studio. Like it's, it's when people talk about like, oh, so-and-so left this studio and went to the other studio. Yeah, because they don't want to make Halo for the 15th time or they're, they're tired of making Uncharted. Sometimes people get to a point in their lives where they just want to do different stuff. You do it for 10 years, you switch companies and you make a different type of game. That's how you solve the problem, right? Oh, I don't want to do this my whole life. If you're one of those people and you want to try something new, go to a different studio. And if you've released the last of us, I imagine you're going to be able to go somewhere else. AAA industry, then please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments because I am genuinely interested. As we know, at this point, the life of a game developer isn't an easy one thanks to the poor treatment of game studios. Yeah. But I do think it is telling how even big industry names have left studios to work on independent projects and escape bland corporate mechanisms. Yeah, but like... I've said for a long time on this channel that I do think we're going through an industry reset period and stuff like this, stuff like X Apex Legends and Titanfall leads form new studio, Wildlight Entertainment. They're doing something new. That's awesome. That is great. Are they all going to be successful? No, they're not. But they took a shot. And I think that's really cool and should be commended. I don't think it's some negative thing where they're like, ah, oh, we got to escape. Yeah, escape with enough money to start a studio are you kidding me i think it's i think everything's okay and like if, if you've released one or two bangers and you're ready to try out a different studio as i was working on you're gonna studio, find work one particular well you will eventually the game kept popping into my head ah. Ah, still going. 2019's Death Stranding yeah. by Kojima Studios, helmed by the legendary game developer Hideo Kojima. Kojima created the Metal Gear Solid series, considered by many, including myself, to be one of the best video game franchises of all time. After a mysterious dispute between Kojima and his longtime employer Konami, he left them and created his own studio. It also didn't help that Konami wanted to pivot into the mobile market and pachinko machines leading to the cancellation of <laughs> Silent Hills, which probably would have ended up being the best horror game of all time, but now it's gone. Due to his legacy... In life, in life, Paul Sink says Death Stranding equals Walking Simulator. Death Stranding's great. 
I really, really love Death Stranding. Play through that whole game. That is what everybody says about it. But if you actually play it and you kind of get invested in the, in the building of infrastructure for the world again, it becomes very fun very quick. I, I really enjoyed that one. Not for everybody, but I am much more positive about that. And look at what look at what Kojima's managed to do. You hit a point in your career, like Kojima did, on game development, right? I imagine you hit a point in your career where you're like, hey, I want to do something vastly different from what I've been doing. I can stay here and play it safe, or I can take a big leap and go try something for myself. And Kojima did it, and he knocked it out of the freaking park. And now he's doing stuff for Microsoft. He has his own studio, his own team. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. Like, I, I think it's awesome what Kojima accomplished. Yeah, Lots of respect. prolific game creator. Kojima created a new studio, and Sony funded the production. And, and we see Bioware doing it. We see all these companies helping or starting new things of Death Stranding, but allowed him to do so with practically no oversight or interference. They simply trusted that he would make a good game because, well, he's Hideo Kojima. Long yep. story short, we ended up with Death Stranding, a game starring numerous Hollywood actors like Norman Reedus, Mads Mikkelsen, who my wife has a worrying fascination with, <laughs> Leia Sidhu and two of Kojima's favorite directors, Nicholas Winding Refn and Guillermo del Toro. There was a very long run up to the game with a handful of surreal trailers, leaving fans to speculate for a few years on what the game was about and how it would play. Eventually, we found out that Death Stranding was a long cinematic game in which you, as Norman Reedus's character, Sam Bridges, played as a guy who delivered packages. People were a little split on the idea, but nevertheless, it was a Kojima game, so it must be good, right? Well, it's not that straightforward. For many a game where the majority of the time is spent walking across... I think the game was contentious. I, I agree with this assessment of Death Stranding. It was a contentious game, and I've, I've played everything Kojima's ever made in the Metal Gear series, or touched, like even Metal Gear Acid. I didn't play Police Knots, but... I, I think Death Stranding is a fantastic game. So I agree it's contentious. And somebody in chat brought up Starfield. Starfield, I'd say, was contentious. It's their first foray to try something pretty new. It's like a space exploration game. Largely, though, got a lot of... They have a whole review sheet in their marketing where it's all 10s out of 10s. It seems like it made them a lot of money. So I, I think we're going to get more Starfields in the future. And they'll address a lot of the the critiques and criticisms and hopefully they utilize what they learn with starfield for the next elder schools I, i'm very happy about i'm happy about the industry resetting because you know what's going to happen kojima is going to go out and he's going to become the next konami right the bioware teams like everybody from bioware went off and to do their own studio one of them could potentially become the next ea it's not going to happen overnight it didn't happen overnight for ea but there is a potential that we see a whole new life breathe breathing into the industry new life will be breathing breathed into the industry i see i'm not smart <laughs> and i'm excited by that fields and mountains while hauling a bunch of packages on your back and appendages between lengthy cutscenes wasn't an appealing selling point. There were some action elements in the game, but they were limited as the story makes it very clear that killing another person can quite literally have catastrophic results. And considering that many AAA titles are sold on the back of the satisfaction of destroying your enemies, it was a bitter pill to swallow. Depending on who you ask, Death Stranding was either a great game or a boring game. Personally, I really liked it. There were a few embarrassing moments like Sam and Princess Beach having a slow motion run on the shoreline. More than anything though, yeah. I and many <laughs> others appreciated that the studio was given the opportunity and budget to create something that wasn't designed to cater to a bullet point list of what gamers currently like. Kojima has more clout than probably any other game developer out there. He's so probably. revered that his name is put next to the game title. Well, that's that's a little bit of him doing that, right? Uh, I would argue that Cliff Blazinski had a shot 
But when he did Lawbreakers, I think it was Lawbreakers, right? It just didn't resonate with people. And sometimes you take a shot and it misses. And that's that's just how it goes. Sometimes things don't pan out and that sucks, right? But to say that it's somebody's fault that it didn't pan out, that, that I can't get behind. On the box, not everyone can be Kojima. So they can't exactly ask a publisher to write a blank check so they can make an experimental David Jaffe. title like Death Stranding. Another good example. That's just the industry for you. Just the life. The $70 price tag may be justifiable on the games that we currently get because of how they're produced, but we could do things differently. Even though there is a segment of consumers who like to whine about the visual quality of video games, especially indie ones, they're a vocal minority. And they're the ones that go out of their way to make games. See, he just counteracted his point earlier in the video. Earlier in the video, he said something along the lines of uh, people whining about video games and how like that's bad. But like now he's saying it's a very small percentage, which is the truth. M most people aren't like out there making these stupid comparisons. They're just reacting to them developers and artists feel bad about their work, so screw them. Games also don't have to be a 20 plus hour experience. A short game is perfectly fine if done well, and if we're being honest, many people just don't have the time to complete long games. Remember that the average age of the person who plays video games is 35 years old, the to same 44. demographic that works nine hour shifts and probably has to look after a kid or two between those. Hey. We're No Compromise Gaming, your ticket to least to own gaming PCs what? for people with zero. A short while back, <laughs> I, I'm getting YouTube right Brad. Here, got some widespread attention after the user said, I want shorter games with worse graphics. So I actually, I don't think this was the original tweet. It might have been, but I, I agree. I agree with this. I don't think we need longer games. We just don't because you get nonsense. Made by people who are paid more to work less. And I'm not kidding. And you know what? They're right. The games industry is booming right now. But like any entertainment industry, it's not immune to being toppled or being reset. From the 1930s to the late 1950s, the Hollywood film industry was thriving under the stewardship of five major studios. But as movie budgets skyrocketed and they couldn't convince enough people to buy tickets, it all came tumbling down. The video game industry may have produced some of the most profitable entertainment products of all time, but neither money nor passion guarantee success. Neither do. Neither guarantee success. Sometimes it's a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill even the largest of monuments can be toppled. All it can take is a handful of failed games, and the landscape of gaming as we know it could transform dramatically. And as that happens, people will lose their jobs. Studios will Born shut down in an effort to protect the bottom line. Because of that situation, no, Hollywood started taking risks. Let's talk about Saints Row. What happened with Saints Row? This game wasn't particularly good. It was a massive departure from the Saints Row formula. They put all their money into it. Like when you release your reveal trailer and everybody hates it, fix it. <laughs> fix it. It wasn't a good game. And like, I didn't even play Saints Row. I watched enough clips of the glitches and just bad gameplay and I'm just like, yeah, that game, I, I'm not going to spend my time playing that game. Down in an effort to protect the bottom line. Because of that situation, no, Hollywood started taking risks again by hiring young filmmakers with fresh ideas, and it turned out that people loved them. Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, yeah. George Lucas, and others revitalized cinema. And, and we're seeing that reset in the games industry right now. Games like Pal World coming along out of nowhere and seeing massive success. Larian coming along with Baldur's Gate 3. Like we're going to see, and Larian's like a very large company right now. We're going to see new places come up out of nowhere. We're going to see old legacy brands 
like Activision fooled into Microsoft, right? And new studios are going to reform. It's how everything in life works, isn't it? Right? Something changes, you move on. I, and the games industry, like, it's not going anywhere. People aren't, like, everybody's not just one day going to stop playing video games. Went on to create what many consider to be some of the greatest films of all time. Great things can come from change, even if that means taking risks and possibly losing along the way. The games industry, as it stands, can afford to take a few risks, and they don't have to spend $200 million each time that they want to do so. Shorter games with lower production budgets can be great. I, I don't think the game needs to be shorter. I don't think every game needs to be shorter. Like you can't put it in a basket and just say, these are all the things you need to do to be successful. And this is what I want. I do agree that it would be great if there were some shorter games, but I, I just think not every game needs to be Assassin's Creed Valhalla or Starfield, right? These massive long experiences. I, I do think there's a, a market for shorter games. I think some games can be longer, like, there's plenty to go around, and that, that's why we're seeing success all over the place. And they can be sold cheaper, meaning that people don't have to worry about regretting burning a $70 hole in their wallet. I'm not an expert on business by any means, but hedging your bets on $200 million products, no matter how safe it might seem, doesn't guarantee success. Nothing like does. How right now people are becoming tired of the superhero genre, leading some movies. The DC movies stink. Marvel oversaturated the market and they're just pushing them out too fast. So they stopped being special. Marvel didn't know what the hell to do after the infinity war. Right? Like the, how badly they messed everything up after the infinity war. It's insane to me. Tell the freaking X-Men story. <laughs> Introduce the X-Men and tell the X-Men story. There you go. What is even happening in the Marvel Universe right now? Nobody cares about any of that stuff. Tell another story. Introduce the X-Men. Like, there's so many things. that can... It's rumored that GTA 6 will be four hours longer than five. I'm sure it'll do billions of dollars. <laughs> Barely breaking you, even when you take into account marketing budgets. A smaller budget game not doing well isn't the end of the world, though, when you have the wiggle room to fail. And if you end up with the next big hit, then the returns can be huge. Just look at the success of this year's Baldur's Gate 3, yeah. a title which Microsoft believed that barely anyone would care about. Glowing reviews and word of mouth helped the game explode in popularity, despite it being a CRPG, which is a very old fashioned genre. But now it only cost it only cost a hundred million dollars to make Baldur's Gate 3. How? What? You're telling me Spider-Man 2 cost $400 million or something? Or what What did he have on his thing there? $260 million? But Baldur's Gate cost $100 million? What are you doing, Sony? How? What are you doing, Sony? What's going on? That's nuts. That is absolutely nuts. Now it's scooping up a bunch of Game of the Year awards, and although I wrote this before most of those awards were handed out, I included that in this because I'm confident in it happening. Although personally, if I'm honest, I think Tears of the Kingdom was Game of the Year. So good. Major publishers wouldn't Both dream were great. of releasing a game in such a niche genre in this day and age because they believe that people wouldn't like it due to it not being as accessible as your typical AAA title. But it turned out that not only did people want to play it, but they were starving for something different. Yep, starving is a very good way to put it. We just needed something different. So if you start seeing more games like Baldur's Gate being released by companies such as EA or Ubisoft in the near future, Great. you have Larian Studios to thank for that. Or blame. No, that's... See, I don't think that's true because we already know the next Mass Effect has been in the works for several years, but potentially because of Baldur Gate 3's success, they'll get more money, more time, and more effort put towards a fantastic new Mass Effect game. So thanks, Baldur's Gate. Do you think AAA games need to release a movie anime alongside them nowadays to get ROI quicker? No. No, I don't. I think that's like an upsell. That's like a bonus. Destiny's going to be doing it. I, I don't think it's necessary. Thank you, Tuco. 
more than likely blame. Like anything else in life, it's good to occasionally step out of your comfort zone. So if you're bored of the landscape of gaming as it is, try more indie games. Play something that you didn't think that you would like, but others love. You never know if something is for you unless you try it. Much like you, I'd rather not see developers, artists, programmers, and everyone else who makes games lose their jobs just so the industry Nobody wants can crumble that. and be rebuilt as something else. Nobody wants that. Like, nobody wants the industry to crumble and be rebuilt. No, I certainly don't want that. Will it happen regardless of what I want? Potentially. Like, what we want and what happens aren't in our control, right? I want everybody to work at a get a huge salary at a game studio and make only the games that they love. It's like, there's reality also that we need to consider, right? I don't think anybody wants that. Nobody wants the industry to crumble. I am also super burnt out on games as a service, Tyler. But I do know that no matter who you are, familiarity can breed contempt and that game companies should treat change as an inevitability instead of something that they need to throw money at to avoid. Uh... I, I don't... You can check out his Patreon there. AAA games will probably destroy the industry. I don't feel like he proved his point. So, like, sometimes when I do these React videos, I, I just want to, like... The, the thesis was AAA games will probably destroy the industry. But he talked about how the industry is having a lot of offshoots, seeing a lot of success with new studios come about, saying that games are too expensive. But there's no evidence proving that it's destroying anything. He even says in his video that the games industry is doing like better than it's ever done. It's it's like all the other all the other avenues combined are doing less than the games industry is. So I don't feel like the the thesis was proven. Anyway, that's uh that's my two cents on it. If you're watching live, don't go away. We're not going anywhere. I'm just doing the outro for the VOD. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to know when I go live. If you want to become a member to support me making content, you can do so. Getting uh, YouTube Plus, which apparently turns off ads. You can click that join button right down there, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm not getting out of here. I'm just doing the sign up for the VOD. If you want to check out one of my other reacts, you can do so. It's right over here. I'll be right back. Okay, so what should we... Maybe I shouldn't do the outro when I'm actually live. Let's see how many concurrence I lose for people who don't pay attention when I said like 10 times that I'm not going anywhere. Just over 500 in the chat and 250 likes on the video. Oh, Chris, I didn't do the call out. That's why. Uh, I don't really have any shorter videos to react to. Extra Credits Gaming has Why Gaming is Lonely Now. Uh, that one's pretty short. I kind of want to play Pal World. Talk about Indiana Jones. I'm very excited about Indiana Jones. Talked about it with Paris and like how stoked I was. Uh, Yeah, see, I lose concurrence when I do the outro. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'll just like leave it and clip it out and post it during the week, I think. Do, 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 do. do you want to play Pal World a little bit? Yay, Pal World. Oh, you know what? Let me check something really quick. Let me check one thing. Oh, internet's doing that weird thing again where I, nothing works. What we got here? Is this? Uh, 
I don't see anything. Yeah, pretty quiet right now. All right. Let's do uh, Pal World. Got it all booted up here. Seven of my friends are playing right now. It's $29.99 if you want to buy it and play right now. Uh, I think it's this one. Pal World now loading. I don't have a server or anything. Can I switch over to a server? You guys can play with me if you want. I don't care. Uh, start game. This one. Change world settings. Multiplayer on. Confirm. I have no idea how you can play with me. Oh, it's not outputting audio for some reason. Oh, there we go. All right, so I, I've been playing a little bit. I got a few pals. I'm supposed to go fight the syndicate leader or whatever. Uh, how do I do anything here? Well, that's not what I meant to do. What else do I need? So maybe I can make some... I'll make a stone spear. They have this weird thing where, like, you have to create it and then acquire it, which I find a little odd. And also, like, I doesn't go into inventory. There's all these little things that I don't love. Alright, let's go try out the spear. I guess I'm just gonna, like, level up. I don't really know... I honestly, I don't really know what to do. Because I took on the boss, and I am super duper underleveled. Whoops. Well, I got an egg. So basically, yeah, you, you capture pals, right? <laughs> That's what you do. Um, how many of those do I have? I have three more. Let's go try and get a more powerful one. Uh, we'll just go to the end. Oh yeah, this is this is super dumb. I have to go back to a point. How's the fish tank doing? I'm actually having a major issue right now. A bunch of my shrimp died, and I don't know why. Everything in the tank is fine. I'm a little upset. But otherwise, the fish tank's doing good, except for I lost half of the shrimp, <laughs> which sucked. My biggest frustration with Power World are no rebuild slash move function. Yeah. What's this? I didn't notice this cave before. Enter dungeon. Uh, I'm level nine. I don't think I'm ready for whatever that is. Let's get this guy. Yeah, that's 100% capture. Let's go. I, I, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do right now. So I'm just going to, like, capture these guys. And then go back. Currently playing Cyberpunk. Yeah, as soon as I actually start playing video... People don't want to see me play video games. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> people are like, you never play games. I play games. Nobody watches. All right. Well, like, hey, Destin, how come you never play games on stream? Because as soon as I do, I lose 150 concurrence. <laughs> so just saying. They don't want to see your bad gameplay. Clay, come on. You know I'm. Yeah, you know I'm bad. All right. This is a level 11. And usually when they're grouped up like that, they'll gang up on you. I'm going to go. I scared him, so I'm going to go for the level 11. Oh, I didn't build arrows. Frick. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, this is going to go badly. Oh, that's going pretty good. Hit him. Oh my god. Can 
I just use the bat, maybe? Come here. Ugh. I want one of these. I did not come prepared. Armor is damaged. Yeah, I'm, let's just see what happens. 4%. And that good. Can I eat something? Like, what am I supposed to do? How am I going to survive this? Uh, ah. Let's see. Respawn. Where was I? Oh, no. Yeah, I want to go there. All right, whatever. We'll just go where I was and go get my stuff. Should have brought out the... Uh... The ice guy. Oh, what's that one? I don't have one of... I don't have a crem cremis. I have one more. Let's get a cremis. I can I can take out a level two. Power world will outsell cod. That would be kind of crazy. Got him. All right. We got a new pal. That's Eevee? No, it's clearly different. There were two Riddick games. You are correct. There were two Riddick games. I don't really know why I should worry about the Syndicate thugs. Did it say I leveled up or my base leveled up? Uh... Let's do attack. Pretty good on everything else. Um, hmm. Got to repair my stuff. Repair. Repair. What is this? Oh, I need one cloth. All right. Let's go make a cloth. And then the lamb guy. Come help me out. We can repair my shirt. Oh, we're getting raided. They get stuck at the bottom of the hill, so I don't even really understand what's happening here. Uh, how many of these can I make? 11? Let's do it. So yeah, you gotta like craft everything. I built this terrible house that I'm never gonna use. Oh, did they actually... Well, that's not good. Yeah, I'm... I mean, I'm going to die. They have two flying dinosaurs. Uh, just trying to build these arrows. <laughs> just give me a second. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get it now. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm screwed. Like, what am I going to do? How am I? I can't fight you, dinosaur. Get out of here. Yeah. Let me quick. Let me let me go make a, a pal ball really quick. What? Get out of here. They're level 15s. What am I even going to do against you? Yeah, I'm dead. Like <laughs> Capture one. You have to damage them enough to be able to capture them. They literally just took out my whole base. My whole base is gone. Are they still? Yeah, they're still there. I don't have any pal. Can I? Yeah, I can't build anything because all my stuff's down there. But he's almost. Man. I'm gonna get my stuff, I'm gonna run away, and then I'm gonna try and capture that one. Because he's he's almost dead. Yes, take all. Do I have one? No. Yeah, all my all my pals are dead. Sorry, incapacitated. What's your invite code? I'll send it to you in one sec. 
Yeah, I I need wood and stone. Let me get that really quick while my... Oh! They killed it! Who killed it? Oh, my, my inventory. Can I save this? Oh, man. I can't move. Well, what am I supposed to do? They destroyed everything. <laughs> Uh, yes, put out the fire. Maybe don't stand in the fire when you put it out. Okay. So he's extinguishing. All right, you saved one. Go save the other. I can put my stuff back in there then. Uh, how do I put everything in there? I can't. All right. There we go. I can move now. All right. Well, <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> Literally the dinosaur came and ruined everything. Everything has been... <laughs> Can I build a bed and just go to sleep and then? Sure. I have to build it. Oh my God. Foundation, wooden foundation. Yeah, we're building a, we're bu building literally a shack. I am not investing heavily into every, anything ever again. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have put everything there. And we need a roof, wooden roof, and then we'll build a bed, shoddy bed. You got enough room? Are you kidding me? So like, is there no way for me to just remove the wall? That's, that's so stupid. All right, there we go. Take a little nap. Oh yeah, I gotta build it first. Put your pals in storage so they heal. So if I go to sleep, I think everybody just heals and then they, they're like, fine. Yeah, see, they're all gonna wake up. All right. And then... Uh, PAL management. Oh, one of them aren't dead. Great. Let's get you to work. That's fine. I got more sheep. One of my sheep didn't die. All right. And then I'll go to sleep again. And then... They'll all be good. All right. Attack the wall. Yeah, that takes so long, though. Right click can let you remove walls. Let me try that. Nope. Build. Yeah, see, I can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, get to work, minions. Uh, learned Hydro Jet. That's good. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically Pokemon, but it's, like, pretty unique. I'm having fun with it. Uh, Technology-wise, I can build some new stuff. I don't really need any of this. Poison arrow, that seems good. What else can I build? So I have to fight this really difficult enemy. And like what level do I need to be to have a gun? 
when can I build the gun? <laughs> Uh, invite code. Somebody. Oh, I have to be level 22, and then I start to get the guns. Uh, you want to know my invite code? Um, it's R Y key eight. R Y key eight. I don't know if that means you can you can come play with me, but if it does, come on, feel free, help me. I have no idea what I'm doing. Really, I'm doing my best. Just having a good time. Uh, I got my arrows. What's this? Ooh, high col quality pal oil. Small pal soil. I did not build this in the best spot. Whatever. I wish you could move buildings and stuff around for sure. Uh, didn't they break one of my tables? They built... They broke my repair bench. No, they broke my primitive workbench. I'll put the workbench like here, I guess. So it's a little away from the house. All right, and we need, I don't know, 10 of these. What am I low on? Oh, I don't have any wood. Well, let's go farm some wood first. Dur -dur 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 -dur. How do you go to in what's the shortcut to go to inventory? Because I keep having to like escape, escape, and it's a little tedious. How's the audio balance? We're gonna stream until 1.30. That's the agreement with my wife. I get to play a little bit of Power World. Really enjoying this game. I wish I could just make one of my pals do stuff. Like, I don't have any pal that can do wood for me. Just go constantly mine wood so I don't have to do this. Yeah, apparently you can capture the humans, which is pretty funny. I, I can't... Oops, wrong way. I can't believe they just came along and they just, like, nuked everything I had built. In, like, a second. Who is that? Oh! <laughs> that's another person! Hi, whoever that is. So we got a new player. If you want the invite code, I'll bring it up again. It's like, hey, how's it going? What level are they? Can I see? Press and hold. No, I don't want to. I don't want to start guilt. I'm not ready for that kind of relationship right now. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go kill and capture stuff right now. Let me see how much weight do I have? What is the keyboard shortcut for? Go to menu. My weight's fine. That's what I keep telling my wife. My weight's fine. All right, let's go kill some stuff. I should probably. It's not I, which is weird. Oh, it's tab. It's tab. Um. Oh, I put all my berries in the thing. Whatever. I'll just pick some berries. I forgot you can you can slide and you go way faster. She, she killed the the pal. If you crowd slide, you go super fast. I want one of those. Those are level ten. Whoops, wrong button. It might need the flame torch. Let's do this. Why are these things so strong? Ouch. 
That one hit decimated my shield? Are you kidding me? Oof. I'm gonna go for it. Oh, okay. Pretty low still. Should have brought some food. Maybe like two more hits. Don't kill it. All right, we might have got it. Yeah, let's go. Oh, we got some more players. <laughs> oh, and I really wanted the this fox guy. He's pretty low level, so we'll probably be fine. Can't, how could you do this? I would just stop murdering them. Why are you killing everything? That isn't what I signed up for. <laughs> no. We don't harm animals on this stream. Oh. Do I get that too? Can I pick that up? Oh, man. I've never seen a chest before. We'll get one of these guys. Stop killing everything. <laughs> I am on the West Coast. All right, we got two more of these guys. But I haven't, I don't have any food. I need to eat. Hmm. Oh, there's an egg. I think that's the kind that you can uh, put in the incubator. That's exciting. So I definitely want the mammoth. Right, I'm going to run back to the base. What's that? I don't know where my teammates are. They're all just slaughtering everything they can get. <laughs> they see. Don't worry, they're just pals. Oh, this game's silly but fun. I don't know. Can you trade? No, you can't trade, right? A lot of cativas. You get some sort of XP bonus for having 10. 10 of the same pal, I think. I'm just going to run back to the base really quick. I can remember how to get there. Hi! Purple beard. We got a purple beard. What am I supposed to do here? Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't stand in the fire. Uh, I'm going to sleep to heal. Oh, but I need food. I need to eat food really quick. Uh, eat. How do I eat it? It doesn't sleeping like it does something positive. I can't remember. All right. What are you doing? Pal box item manager. So we have we definitely have ten of the sheep, right? I want to sort. Sort by. Let's get ten of the. Let's go get three more of the chickens, and uh, six more of the cats. Three chickens, six cats. Yeah, they're just building on here. That's crazy. That's cool. No, 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 no. You're coming with me. Sorry, cat. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> There's a bunch of these gas, I mean. What is that? 
don't know what that is. I want it. Yeah, just stand there and... Uh-oh. <laughs> Can I not? 68, that might not be... Ran out of arrows again. Oh, not you too. I just lost so much of my weekend of this game. It's very good. That's a level six. Is there any benefit to having both a male and a female in your group? Forty nine. Ouch. All right, I can I can beat you up a little more if that's what you want. You could have just come with me. Now you're gonna get it. Uh oh. Come on, that's that's a capture, right? I mean. You're gonna die if you don't come with me. See? What did I tell you? <laughs> Can I just straight up capture the chicken? Oh, I don't have any pal spheres either. All right, gotta go back. I think you can build a nursery. You can build an egg incubator. No, sorry. Your wife's mine now. Sorry, pal. Armor is damaged. Eh, I gotta go repair stuff, too. See, I feel like you should just be able to open the map and fast travel to places. Yeah, they raided my base right, Teddy, right when I started. Thanks for being a member, by the way. I see you on the thing all the time. Uh... Right when I started, they raided my base and destroyed everything. <laughs> like, it's the first thing that happened when I started the stream. Let's sort everything here. What stacks? Stones and sticks. I really need more arrows. Max. How do I switch ammo type? Because I have flame arrows, but I don't know how to switch ammo type to the flame arrow. It, like, just doesn't do it. I don't know why. You just have to open travel. Yeah, you have to go to the travel point and then fast travel. I, I, I knew that one. Oh, yeah. You have to build a wall. That's a good point. I didn't even think of that. I gotta build my one cloth so I can fix my <laughs> fix my shirt. <laughs> then I take the cloth and I bring it over here. I like the game, don't get me wrong. It's it's pretty fun. Few little few like little minor things. Probably fix the bow. Let me see here. Yeah, so I have arrows and I have flame arrows. How do I quit the flame arrows? Can I not use flame arrows on the old bow? You need flame bow. All right. So I probably didn't do the research for flame bow. Uh, tech. Yeah, so no, I have fire bow. I guess I just didn't make it. All right, let's make a fire bow. What do I need? I need wood. Let's go make some wood. Ah, keep hitting the wrong one. Our flame hour is like way more powerful. Man, I hope the AI stuff doesn't turn out to be like something that they get sued over or something. It, I want to see this as a success story. I talked about that Andy Robson article before and why I was upset by it, but like, I mean, Andy's doing his job. If that's true, ah, that'd be a bummer. You're level 13? I'm level 13 also. Oh, wait, sorry, level 11. Egg with the flame pattern gives a decent pal. All right, good to know. 
Are there shiny pals? I'm actually not sure. I appreciate y'all sticking around. I, I get a lot of complaints that like, oh, Destin doesn't play. He never plays any games. We never see him playing any games. All right, here, I'm literally playing games. <laughs> there, you happy? Uh-oh. Uh. Drop the stones, I guess. And get those later. No. I just need to walk to the box. And put my rocks in the box. Anything stackable can go in here. There we go. All right, let's make the flame bow. Flame bow, start production. There are shiny, huh? Team Destin, Chucky, good to see you. You you're like one of the first commenters usually on my videos. I appreciate you hanging out, watching the live stream. All right, so we got bow, can flame bow. Wait, where'd my flame bow go? I just built it and acquired it. Oh, it's <laughs> They need to redo that art. That's like. And then. All right. If I'm going for combat, we'll just we'll go prepared. Right. Uh, everything, everything looks in good condition. Is my shield all good? Shields good. Clothes are good. Should probably eat something. Get rid of this stuff. Let's make some flame arrows. Oh, I don't have flame organ. All right. I don't know who's in this world with me. There were like a bunch of people here 10 seconds ago. I had an egg. Did I put it in here? See, I have eggs, but these are an ingredient. They're not like you can't incubate them. So I'm wondering. Yeah, see? No usable recipes. Try and ro locking recipes from the tech menu. No. Where's the water cannon? Oh, metal axe and metal pickaxe? Are those worth it? Need ingots. Got bear traps. I don't know what nail does. Chat said I need to like build a barrier. The eggs you can hatch will be bigger with patterns. All right. I don't even know I had leather. All right. How many pal orbs? Do I oh, I need to build the pal orbs. Okay. Build as many of these as I can. I wonder if 11's like my cap for the, the orbs. So I guess you randomly spawn anywhere in the world when you begin, kind of like Minecraft, maybe. I don't know, Carolina. And I have unused stat points. I'm going to turn up my attack. I would like to get through the first boss. That would be great. Oh my god, look at all this stuff. Um, all right, I guess we can go do stuff. How many more of those cats do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four more cats. Three more chickens. Four more cats, three more chickens. The reason why I want those. Oh, there's all my buddies. Is because you get like a stat boost. So like, here's a chicken. Wait, I do not want to use my bow on a two-hit chicken. Ah! I killed the chicken. 
Do I have my bat still? No, I don't. Beer's fine. What? Alright, three more cats, three more chickens. Here's two. Alright, one more chicken, three more cats. There's a cat. This one was wet. I don't know what's up with that. Hey, get back here. You're the last one I need. Get back. Mm. Yeah, you're not getting out of here, bro. Why are you so sweaty? You look like me after walking up a flight of stairs. <laughs> All right. So there we got the bonus for those two. I really like. Wait, where were they? The one that somebody said look like a Pokemon character. I mean, they all do. I really like the penguins. The, like, ice penguins. Oh, and I really I need a flame organ, so I'm going to go kill one of these. Sorry, I need your organs. Come here. Oh, you're level five? Let's see if I can capture you. 80%. We shut the cookie business, dads. We shut the cookie business, and instead, I'm just streaming on Sundays. I'm just going to kill this one because I need his organs. Sorry, buddy. Ooh, I got two of his organs. Yeah. The cats look like Meowth, right? Like, the cats are a thousand percent Meowth. Surprise. I'm going to capture this one. Oh, there's a chest. Stop killing you for a second. God, the arrows are so freaking expensive. Yeah, if you slide, you just go down the hill super duper fast. If I hit him again, he's going to die. There we go. Is there a way to check my pal deck? Yeah, okay. Um, so how many of these do I have? 17 of 10, 13 of 10, 10 of 10, 10 chickens. We have three of 10 of those guys. See, if you capture 10 of them, you get like a stat boost. Yeah, I have one of those guys. These are all cool looking. I haven't seen all these, have I? Let's go try the fire arrow. All right, so here's... Wait. Wait, what? This is the fire bow against the fire type. Let's try it against the gummus. All right, so... This is old bow. It does 186. This is fire bow. <laughs> okay. Fire bow is much stronger. It's four times stronger. Let's see if let's see what the fire bow does against this guy. Uh, not as strong against the Melpaca. This might have been a huge mistake. Get out of here. Still stronger than the base. Ow. Oh, 23? That's not happening. Don't kill me. Where's my... Oh, 
Oh yeah, I got this guy. Oh, I'm out of pal balls? Oh, this is bad. Well, I'm just gonna kill you now. Yeah, it's alright. Hmm. Well, this seems like a disaster. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> Why? What is happening? My game, like, lagged out or something. I hate that I have to walk all the way back to base every time. Like, there has to be a way to do this faster. How many people in chat are playing Pal World? Anybody? I've been playing quite a bit. Having a good time with it. Me and your game venture. So like, are you just in the same world as me? Are you able to do whatever? I'm addicted, Alex says. It's really fun, huh? I like it. Yeah, it's a good game. I, I'm definitely surprised by the uh, the phenomena of the game, just because it's doing like so well, in a good way. Like it's great. Oh, I should probably eat some of those. Um. Let's go manage my pals. I got some really good ones. Let's get this one in my party. I think the Gumas can go, right? It's level three, level five. I mean, these just seem so much stronger. We can swap one of the Pingullets for that guy. Why would I keep the sheep? What is this ability? Punch Fury and Air Cannon. Hmm. Sort by level. Oh, I have a level 10 cat, a level 9 penguin. Hmm. Oh, yeah, we're here to build stuff. And also sleep so I heal. How do you heal? Yeah, you go to sleep, it goes faster. I'm having a lot of fun in that game. Charles, good to see you. Steepy character. Oh, yeah, I guess I should talk a little bit about the channel. Um, I... Uh, Failed in my 2024 goal of doing three videos every single day. But I am going to continue to make streaming and everything part of the plan. Yeah, we're going to make a bunch of flame arrows. Yeah, I want to do streaming every Sunday. We're going to do around 1030 to 130 every single Sunday like that's a year goal every Thursday evening I film an interview so those that go, either go up Friday or Sunday right and then during the week I would like to do a video a day that's my target but I was looking at I was looking at my metrics from last year versus this year and I was doing 48 pieces of content this year already in January, right? 48. So let's say some of that's duplicative. And I, I did like 20, 24. And last year I did like uh, seven. 
the type of content I was doing last year did the same amount of views as the type of content I'm doing this year, but I'm doing way more content. I almost feel like it's like destined over saturation. So I was like, okay, like I, the reacts are bringing in a ton of unique viewers, which is really, really cool. So I'm going to keep doing the reacts when I have time. I just, I haven't found anything like that. That's really the type of stuff that I would normally react to. So uh, this is sort of where my head's at with everything that's been happening on the channel. And uh, I got to get back to like doing more scripted stuff. Boom. There we go. Uh, sort. I should probably build a better bat. I don't have anything for my head. Can I do a technology? Oh, and I should enhance my stat. Let's just do attacks again. Uh, yeah. Pal deck. Do I have any... Can I build something for my head? Like, is there a helmet? Oh, what's this? Yeah, sure, let's do that. How many tech points do I have? 25. All right, I got a lot of tech points. Let's do the poison bow. That one seems good. Let's build the gear so that these characters can see their full potential. Oh, I could ride it. See, what's the stat what's the stat difference with the house plant set? I don't even know what I need. What do I need here? Wooden gate. High quality. Yeah, okay. That one seems worth it. Primitive furnace. See, I don't know what I'm supposed to unlock early. Oh, how do I build this? Ancient technology. Grappling gun. Wait, can I... I, why can't I unlock these? Are they like story elements? You can ride and fly some. So how do I... Uh, E. And then can I ride you? He can do the trees! Oh my god. I could have had somebody mining wood for me this whole time. Uh, any of these guys do wood. Well, he does fire. I need another one of those horses. <laughs> like ASAP. Alright, then I assume... Let's build the high quality workbench. What do I need? Ing ingot, wood, and nail. Where's the saddle? Where do I build the saddle? Mm, here? Yeah, here we go. So for the saddle, I need more flame organs. I need ingot. Hmm. Uh, is there any, like a smithing station or something I haven't built yet? Stone pit can produce stone at base. Um, let's do nail. It seems like an important ingredient I'll need later. Medieval medicine workbench. You know what? I'll, I'm going to go make the steel... Uh, pickaxe. Well, wait, what do I have now then? I have stone pickaxe. I thought stone is the base one. And what's the fancy one? Did I not unlock it? Okay, yeah. Metal pickaxe. All right, let's go find some ingots. And build some Pokeballs. 
Don't bottom with the saddle. It's way too slow. Really? Well, that's a good tip. Ooh, what is this? Megasphere. Pal balls, 100% different. That's right, Clay. My mistake. Silly me. <laughs> so how many pal decks? What are these starter guys? Got 10. Let's go try and get 10 of the fire guys or 10 of the penguins. Or the ground guys. Oh, and I need arrows too. Hey, it'd be super great if you guys like brought that wood over here. <laughs> Bring the wood over here. All right, there you go. They seriously, what, they carry like one log at a time? Let's build a bunch of arrows. I'm just gonna go over to the, uh, the main base, I think, and then uh, go from there. Since I can build some new stuff, I'll let the guy do that. Foundation. Oh, yeah, the wooden gate. I'm not going to focus on that right now. I have tons of flame arrows. Like 30 flame arrows. And I got the, uh, the poison. I need wooden a venom gland. Oh, I think we know where I get the venom gland. Now let's do some fast travel. We're going to go to the furthest point. Oh, and capture some of those guys. I am willing to bet you that the fire bow wrecks the ice penguins. Hopefully not too much, though. Go on that little slant. Where are you going? No! Well, whatever. Ow. Good dodge. That's not fair. Hacks. Sorry I killed your companion. What is that? Level 11? Let's go for it. Whoops. Yeah, dot damage. Take that. Ouch. Hey, here's an idea. Don't kill me. I'm going for it. Oh! Did I get it? It was like a 29% capture it. I caught it. <laughs> I'll take it. Why not just let me respawn, like, where my gear is? There's a lot of, like, little things that could be corrected. I cannot believe. <laughs> I can't believe that was a cap. The, the momentum... 
is pretty funny. Well, we were going to get some of these glom balls, right? Oh. Maybe if maybe if I could aim. Did I kill it? Whoops. Where's one of those shiny rock piles? Let's go try and get some ingots. See, I'm already losing track of time. I said I'd stop at 1.30. Okay, three times. I see one of the balls I dropped before. Five. I don't know if that's a cap. I did it a little early. Six. Wait. Did I drop my flame bow or something? Where's my flame bow? I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> Ow! Swing and a miss. Let's go for it. Ouch! 30%? There's like no way I'm capping this thing, right? All right, I'll take it. All right, let's go. What is that thing? I'm going for it. No, I don't have any balls. Oh, I'm dead. I gotta kill you, monkey. Sorry. It's kill or be killed in these parts. Alright, we need ingots. So I'm gonna see if this gives me an ingot. Whew. Pal World's pretty fun. It's a good game. I, I understand the hype for sure. So I keep getting ore. Is there a way to convert ore into ingot? Or is there like a location you like? What's the in-world item that I need to get ore or uh, ingot? Yeah. Okay. I got plenty of ore. Not seeing anybody in chat chime up. I'm actually not sure. Yeah, what a great get for Xbox Game Pass, by the way. Almost level 13. I Am I almost level 13? I'm doing pretty good. All right. What do we got here? I had Pal Spears. Why wouldn't it? I had three pal spears and it like wouldn't throw it on that one character. That's weird. Hmm. Mushroom. Well, Xbox, Xbox probably funded the development costs of the game. There's no way anybody ever... You need a furnace. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Thank you, Ventura. I'm over on time, but I don't hear the wife and kids. 
Can I play a little bit more? Food foundations. Yeah, I, I didn't unlock the tech for a furnace. I don't think. All right. Primitive furnace. What do I need? I need more flame organ and wood. All right. Of course. Of course, that's what I need. Oh, yeah, that would be fun, Clay. Clay, how have you been, by the way? Clay uh, Chat is somebody that's been following me since, like, I streamed on Twitch regularly. So, 10 years? Like, a super long time. I appreciate Clay very much. He's always helped me with moderation and just, you know, being fun in chat and stuff like that. Yeah, 8 this year. Well, thanks for hanging out with me, Clay, all this time. I gotta go build a cloth to fix my air. Ah, we'll just finish it up. Go drop the the wood in the in the box. What else do I have that's heavy? Anything that stacks. Wool can go in there, I guess. And boop. All right, we gotta go get some flame organs. Um, what was I gonna repair? My shirt. All right, let's get the two bow thing going. This this is so hard for me to see. The flame bow art. I don't know why I just like constantly looking for it. All right, we gotta go kill some of the the flame Pokemon. We'll go to the. I think I, there's more near the middle spot. Yep. Oh, I don't have any fire bow ammo. Really? And we're killing these guys because we need their organs. Oh, this one's done, thankfully. I think I need three. Come back here. I'll go kill that level three instead. The game starts out pretty... That's two. This is level six. I might want to capture him. How many of those do I have? Four out of five. All right, let's go back to base. We'll build our furnace. We'll get our ingot. Then we'll make a gun. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can make guns in this game. All right. Let's go. How did that attack happen? It was from over there, right? If I just build a wall there, I wonder if that would be enough. Ingot. Max. Wait. Required kindling. How do I... Do I have to build a, a fire below it? Um... Ingot, required kindling. Oh, it just needs... I'm probably out of fire. 
like wood again. Constantly running out of wood. Uh, why does it keep saying I need kindling? How do I, how do I make it go? Uh, Fox, go kill more foxes. Yeah, do I not have any more of the... I have a flame organ. Fox has kindling. Oh, okay, so like... Light it up. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, chat. What did I need the ingot for again? I don't even remember. I'm going to build something. Tundra outfit, cloth outfit, the advanced workbench, maybe? I need 10 nails, 15 ingots. Why did I do all that <laughs> for the advanced workbench? Well, let's make the 10 nails that I need. Oh, I need ingots to make nails. All right. Oh, to build the saddle so that I... <laughs> That's right. I can't help, huh? Do I have another cat? All right, let's just... All right, let's get rid of the chicken. Let's get one of these guys in there. The reason I captured that other horse was so that he could actually be useful. Yeah, go get wood. Fox will melt down ore and cook food and light torches. Nice. Well, I put a fox. He's not doing anything. Come on, fox. Sort it out. I want to build the uh, wood gate. I'm just going to put it, like, right here. <laughs> there, we're protected. Nobody could ever get in here. <laughs> the last time I was raided, I think they came in through, through that section. Can it connect to the gate? It's not in the build zone. The notifications are, like, really slow. I'm literally just trying to build this. Because I think... I don't even know. I think the last time they just kind of, like, stormed me from that section. Oh, they're all done. I need lots of ingots, so knock yourself out. Use wooden wall to stop big fire piles from attacking. They weren't fire, were they? You had the suicide explosive two cans attack yet? No. I 
I'm just trying to build like some sort of defense. Oh man. I may have made a huge mistake. I, that's going to have to be good enough, right? Lambo's slacking off. Gonna have to harvest you. Better watch out. Alright, production wise, we want the. We need 10 nails. Means five. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out watching everybody. This game's fun. It's really hard to put down once you start it, as you can see. So, like, when does it... Op I don't really feel like the game has opened up a ton. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying it. But so far, it's just been, like, base building, capturing... Pals, not Pokemon. Um, building things, figuring out the game mechanics. I, I haven't like... Hi, Arthur. I haven't gotten to like the later game stuff. So I'm kind of curious. I feel like I'm right at the beginning and I have like three or four hours of playing. You need to explore more? Okay. All right. And then what else do I need? I need ingots. Eleven. How many more do I need? 15. All right, let's do it. So what is this advanced workbench going to help me with? It's all the same stuff. Do I just get a higher quality things? I'm going to I'm going to assume this armor's like better for some reason. So the, the high quality workbench was pointless. Yeah, looking good now, buddy. Uh what else do we need a bunch of arrows? Faster. Oh, yeah, it is way faster. Okay. I'll allow it. I feel like you're supposed to pet them or something. Afterwards. Uh, let's do the fire arrows. Let's do. Oh, do I need more flame organs for fire arrows? I bet. All right, what else can I unlock here tech-wise? Decorative. I don't care about decorative stuff. Why can't I build the Statue of Power? I bet I have to go win that fight. Bear Trap. I don't really need that. What What is the, the game tell me I'm supposed to do right now? Because you have all these missions here. Build a hot spring. All right, let's build a hot spring. Hot spring. We need more pal fluids. All right. How do I build the pal milking station? <laughs> How do I milk the pal? Trains the farm to automatically produce items. Uh, I don't know that I want the bat. Hmm. Meat cleaver. A knife capable of butchering pals. Well equipped, the pet command is replaced with butcher. <laughs> oh, God. Is that how I harvest? Yeah, that's probably how I harvest the, the stuff. 
Medicine workbench. Can produce simple medicine. Yeah, let's do it. This is decorative. Ooh, a crossbow. Yeah, I'll take that. And did I unlock the, the better? Yeah, okay, that's what I was doing. I was getting the metal pickaxe and metal axe. And boop. So I need ingots. I need five ingots for the metal pickaxe. So I need to go mine. I need to go mine. Oh my god, look at all this stuff. Belt armor is better defense. I wish that was a little clearer on the menu, but might be user error. And I'm going to build another storage container here. Like, I don't need most of this stuff. Well, that one's supposed to go here. Oh, man, I put them too close. I wish I could just move stuff a little bit if I make a mistake like that. So I'll just I'll put the egg in there and the meat. Maybe keep this. Oh, hey! How's it going? How many of these can I make? Let's get some arrows going. We still need more flame arrows. We need more ingots. I gotta go mine. Lots to do. Oh. Do I have enough to make the thing now? What is that? Oh, it's the egg. Thank you. Let's go put it in the incubator. Let's see what happens. Burp. Get in there. Set egg. Wait. Okay. So in 30 minutes. That's awesome. I bet they got it from the big green guy. Thanks, Ventura. So we have two ingots. I got a grand total for it. We need one more, so I gotta go mine some stuff. And then once, once I get the ingots, then I can build the the metal stuff, and I'll just throw the old things away. How many pal balls do I have? Two. That's fine. Wait. I, I don't know what's wrong with my brain. I keep, like, clicking the wrong thing. Oh, wrong one. This might hurt. Do pals evolve? Yeah, they level up. Like if you have them do stuff on your uh on your planes or whatever. Maybe you can help me. No, I need the cat. Dang it. Why does your R? I don't understand heavy core. Production wise, I unlocked the medicine workbench. Seems like I'm going to need a lot of ingots. Your fox friend looks like he knows where to go more than you. 
I'm just building up uh, my tools right now. Lots of ore in here, huh? I wonder how much faster it's going to be once I have my uh, metal harvesting items. I'm going to have an army of cats. I think I have enough cats. Like, I don't need to capture anymore. Yeah, I got 10 of them. Wait, is that a wild one right there? No, that's mine. Dur, 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 dur. Yeah, the NPCs have trouble going up the wall. So the only other point of entry was like air or this section. So I just sort of blocked it off. All right. Nope. Come on. Yeah, that's annoying. Do not put chests right next to each other as a note. Yeah, there should be like a tear down button or something. So we need metal stuff. So right now we need pal juice. I want to make this first. So I need wood. I'll go chop some wood really quick. I think we'll have enough ingots after this. An Xbox exclusive. Yeah, it's kind of Xbox exclusive. It's on Game Pass. I'm playing it on Game Pass right now. Xbox has really made a lot of games in the last few years. Like Vampire Survivors was popping off. Lots of really interesting stuff. You love to see it too, right? Why is land ball slacking off all the time? Do they not have any food or something? Let's see here. They have plenty of food. I don't know why they're complaining. Why are my enslaved animals complaining? All right, we got nine. Which one was I making? What was the expensive thing I was making? Ah, the harvester. I need one more. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Get back to work. Meat cleaver. So let's go see what happens when I go meat cleave one of the lambs. And then my wife saw them, so we'll probably call it there. So uh, sort by level. The lo Here's a level one Lamble, right? Level one. What's the pet button? Wait, I did it wrong. How do I? How do I uh, murder my pal? <laughs> For butcher, all right. Oh God, they really do. <laughs> all right, what did I get? I didn't get anything. 
Hmm. Well, the whole reason I did it was because I thought I would get juice. Oh, whatever. This is annoying. Hmm. Oh, well. Chat, I gotta get out of here. It's about that time. Thank you so much for joining me for the live stream. I really appreciate it. Went a little longer today. Oh, and I got another egg for my friend. Thank you. I gotta go. Fam's home. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. Hit that like button. Help the video get shared. I appreciate you. Power World's a lot of fun. Go check it out. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.